guess what bitches it is Taurus season. Taurus season is in the house. May is officially here and oh my god, you guys need to listen up, okay? There are blessings coming to all of us in May. May is a beautiful, beautiful month. So this is a month that you do not want to miss, okay? Like you do not want to miss your horoscope for this month. Like this is a big freaking deal. So share this effing everywhere okay and report back and let me know that you did please this month is starting a massive 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 new chapter a new beginning in our lives while also wrapping up old chapters and really things that we've been learning for like the last year and a half now since like the beginning of 2022 so this is a really big but beautiful pleasurable and fulfilling month we all need some good news we all need this Taurus energy okay so really quick while we are on the topic of Taurus season and quality and things I have a little little thing to tell you Taurus season is all about quality and finding good quality things finding things of value preferably things that are very natural and Taurus happens to rule my 10th house of career so I actually have a sponsor for today's video now I specifically wanted them to send it to me so I could try it out so I could test it out to see if this was actually like a good product and really did what it said it was going to do now I cannot tell you that it's going to solve all of your fucking problems okay but <laughs> literally I went through this whole fucking box okay one last like I started really getting back into my own like spiritual healing and my healing journey and all of that and that is about the time that I I first got this shipment and started drinking them and I've been drinking them for the last couple weeks now and I can honestly say like I do notice a difference. So Magic Mind is a company that sells these little drinks that are really good for you and full of natural ingredients and give you a lot more energy without the crash, but it's also a nootropic. So it's also helping promote your creativity and potentially flow states as well. It's also perfect for tourist season, hello. <laughs> it's kind of like a little matcha drink uh, that you can mix in with other things like a smoothie or coffee if you still wanna drink that, or you can just drink it on its own they help you focus and they're also supposed to help with stress like there are some things i've tried a lot of different things you guys that i you know where you just don't really notice that much of a difference you know like but like i can feel it after i drink it it's not like a zzz kind of feeling like you get from like energy drinks or coffee or anything like that like it's not gonna give you like a annoying buzzing feeling right but I feel like so much more awake. I just chug it down and I feel freaking good. Like I, I really can tell and feel that it is healthy for my body. I feel like I can focus way more. I feel like it, I really feel like it's making a difference in how I feel physically in my body. So I agree that I would talk about them and recommend them in a video after I tried it because it really is a good product. It really is a good drink. And I can honestly say I really have gotten a lot more creative. If you follow me on social media the last couple of weeks, like I have gotten a lot more creative, okay? Like, and I kind of want another box of these. Like I look forward to taking them every day, like for real. But I will just say that I cannot be 100% for sure that this little drink is the reason I've gotten more creative because I've done a lot of like work on myself too. So, but it pairs beautifully with it, okay? If you are interested in trying it, they did give me a code where you can get 56% off of your first subscription. It'll all be down in the description below. You also get a 60 day money back guarantee because they're fucking confident, which I really, really appreciate. We like a brand that is confident in their product, honey. So yeah, if you would like to try your first subscription for Magic Mind, Again, you can get 56% off and it's got a money back guarantee, 60 day money back guarantee. I'm making sure I'm looking at it right fucking now, you know, like, and, uh, just use my code TawnyM20. I like this shit. I want more of it. I'm really digging it. And yeah, that's my sponsor. Let's get back to it. <laughs> this is a month that is coming with so much clarity, so many blessings, so much abundance. And I am just really, really excited for it. This really looks like a month that is kind of like a breath of fresh air. Spring is going to really feel like spring this year. So before we get started, I do just wanna give you a brief little input about how to work with this Taurian energy that we're coming into right now. Taurus is a feminine sign. It is a fixed earth sign, right? So this is really about embracing more of our feminine energy. If you think like the Empress card in the tarot, like that is this kind of energy, right? Like this is really embracing the glass half full kind of energy, right? Like slowing the fuck down, really 
simplifying things, finding quality in the most simple things, because usually the solutions, the answers are always simple. They're not as complex or difficult as we think that they might be. So this is a time to slow down and find more pleasure, more ease, more quality, more fulfillment in your life and not try to rush through things, right? Uh, so really kind of keep that mentality going into this month. This whole month of May is really offering us a, a final look almost, you know, not completely final, but it, it's really tying up these Taurus nodal lessons that we've been learning since like the beginning of 2022, right? And so whatever has been going on in your life since like winter 2022, the first few months of 2022, onward this month can really wrap up those lessons and bring certain things to fulfillment it can really be a month where there is new growth no new, new foundations are laid new stability is found new quality is found new life new evolution like new pleasure new fulfillment new abundance is found it's all leading to this like really abundant new beginning so like full circle by the end of may and so you really want to keep these things in mind like where do you need to slow down more in life where do you need to lean more into pleasure more into ease more into flow more into feminine energy like where can you find beauty and the small things where can you find pleasure and fulfillment and quality and the simple things in life like get out in nature more enjoy your food more like enjoy music more like really take pleasure and the beautiful things that make us feel so amazing, right? Like that, that give us that like sense of thriving, right? Like take full, like just full advantage of your five senses this month and really just connect with the world around you, with whatever you're doing, be more present, you know, just really soak up this energy, okay? Because we're not going to have it for a very long time. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into your horoscope for your rising sign for the month of May, 2023. Alrighty, Taurus, starting with you, if you're a Taurus rising, if you're a Taurus sun, happy birthday, but this is gonna resonate most to your rising sign for the month ahead of May. So let's get into it. This is such a really big, abundant, like just massive month for you, Taurus. This may be like the biggest month for you, of this year this is going to feel like you are really taking off now at first you may not feel that way because we start off may with mercury being retrograde in your sign it went retrograde towards the end of april and so this is a time where you're really kind of rethinking reflecting on who you are what you desire what brings you pleasure your body your senses your sensuality like how you bring yourself to this world how you interact with this world and, and who you are and who you're being right so this is a month that is so much about the being for you right like the being who are you being right like what are like embodiment what are you embodied in right and do you need to kind of reflect on some things or go back and revisit some things so you can really fulfill that embodiment that you want right the embodiment that you desire that you deserve right and so this is really kind of me be rethinking your value in the world, rethinking how to slow down. Like this is a month where you're really slowing down, right? Like Taurus already is very much about slowing down and leaning into pleasure and, you know, getting into our senses and finding that sense of like pleasure through our bodies and through the physical world and how we interact with the physical world, how we interact with our environment and the material world around us. And so this is a month where you could be really rethinking, reflecting, revisiting certain aspects of yourself that maybe got a little bit lost there for a little bit, right? Especially with all this Aries energy that we've had like the last you know month or so. And so this is a month where you are slowing down and being like, wait, what do I desire? What do I want? What is in my best interest? Like, what do I want to invest my time and energy into, right? What do I value? What is of quality to me? And how can I bring more quality? How can I embody more of the values and the the depth that is inside of me, right? Like the, the, the value that I have inside of me, the quality that I have inside of me, how can I embrace that more and express that more and bring that out, right, to the physical world? right so this is a month where it's almost like you're creating 
a brand new you, right? Or recreating yourself in some way, shape or form as we start the month, especially. And those first couple days of the month, like especially around the second, maybe the first or the second, you could have a major moment of kind of clarity or epiphany, right? Or something that you need to speak into the world because we're gonna have a Sun Mercury Kazemi happening in your sign. And so this is where you're really gonna like get a taste or some hints or some puzzle pieces or some information information or some downloads about the lessons that this Mercury retrograde in your sign is really bringing up for you and teaching you about yourself. And so this could be a memory, this could be remembering something, this could be announcing something, this could be realizing something about yourself that maybe you have neglected in some way or forgot, you know, that you want to re-implement into who you are, right? And so this is a time where you are like really revisiting things, especially the first couple weeks of the month. It's just, it's, I love this month for you. So much is happening. So let's get into the rest of it. So around the fifth, we're going to have a Scorpio lunar eclipse. Now you may start feeling it before the fifth, you know, it's kind of a build up that's going to be happening those first few days of the month. This is a lunar eclipse that is happening in your seventh house of relationships and other people. And and so you've been really, you know, focused on and clearing away a lot of old karma, a lot of old toxicity, a lot of old chaos, a lot of old complex, kind of like <laughs> darker situations, darker energies to do with the people in your life, the people that you want around you, the people in your relationships, the dynamics in your relationships, you know, anything to do with boundaries or uh, defense mechanisms that you have in relationships, like old toxic traits in relationships or in partners, right? And so this first part of the month is really going to bring that up for you where you're kind of like clearing away more shit right <laughs> in terms of your relationships and this could be a really liberating moment for you though like because the sun is going to be pretty damn close to uranus by this time so this is really going to be like you know what like i cannot do this anymore and i need to set myself free from all of this old baggage whether it's from the past or whatever whatever like energy, like darker energy or toxicity that you've been harboring to do with other people or that they've been harboring to do with you. It's like, we need to release this. We need to let this go. It could also be certain relationships in your life that you're like, oh my God, like just the chaos and the complexity and the drama and like the intense, you know, emotional ups and downs. Like you've really been learning how to like accept and embrace stability, accept and embrace quality over quantity, right? Or simplicity over complexity in your relationships and with yourself, with your identity, right? And so it's like, what in you feeds or is drawn to or attracted to some of these you know, toxic patterns. And so you've really been doing a lot of work on that like the last year and a half now, right? Since like the beginning of 2022, like February-ish um, 2022. So this is kind of like that last final like purge, right? It may not be like the complete last one, but it's the big last one, right? It's kind of like the final big purge. It's like, you know what? I'm like, I value my peace too much. I value stability too much. I value consistency. Like where are relationships or relationship dynamics or traits in relationships or certain people in your life going against what you value, right? For yourself. How are they not aligned with you? Like this is really what's coming up for you, uh, likely around the fifth, right? With this last Scorpio lunar eclipse happening and it could be a very liberating moment that you know, may shock you in some ways or you may shock other people because it may not, it may be a little bit like, whoa, I didn't see that coming or a little bit unpredictable or unconventional for you. But it's like, you know what? Like, boom, I'm done, right? Like earthquake energy, like just out of nowhere, just like split, that's it, right? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm letting this go. I'm letting this old part of me go. Or I'm letting this person go. I'm letting this dynamic go. I'm letting these past things go that are just no longer aligned with who you are as a person and who you're becoming through this process, right? And so it could bring up some things from the past because Mercury is still going to be retrograde in your sign as this is happening and Scorpio can deal with like holding on to things from the past and clinging to things from the past. And it's like, I, you know, can't rise into this new 
like beautiful way of being with all this old garbage right like and so i feel like that's what you're really kind of coming to uh the first like week or so of the month on the seventh venus your ruling planet is then going to move into cancer out of your second house of gemini so you're going to kind of shift a focus a little bit you're going to start seeing more themes come up in your life about really connecting to uh, nostalgic places nostalgic environments maybe family maybe friends neighbors places or communities that feel uh very connected for you like that that you feel very close to or bonded with in some way this could mean like you're going on a short trip maybe to your old hometown or maybe to an old place that you used to go to and you can get a lot of healing from this right uh your focus could kind of shift to you know relationships connections and friendships that really do uh that you feel like a sense of like deep security with right that you feel a sense of like deep emotional connection to that's going to be more important to you and a sense of safety like you can have that deep intense emotional connect connection and it doesn't have to be this crazy toxic thing that's like up and down and all over the place right right like it doesn't have to be you know some kind of dark mysterious thing that you're always like wondering where is it going to go where are we at today right like it, it, you're going to be more connected to your heart space, right? That's going to be really big for you. You could start finding that you have more to say, like more to speak about from your heart. You have more to create from your heart. And uh, yeah, so that's going to kind of happen from the seventh onward for the rest of the month as Venus moves into Cancer. So then on the 10th, we're going to have the sun and your sign officially conjunct Uranus and your sign. And so this is going to be some major revelations, uh, some major shifts or changes or um, just a moment where you're like really wanting to embody those unconventional parts of you where you are just like, I am feeling free, I am feeling liberated. And you can start feeling that the days before the 10th to leading up to it. But it's like, freedom and liberation uh, and really owning who you are, really owning your value and claiming who you are, are going to be very big around this time. Um, you may be making some big moves or exposing uh, some things that kind of liberate you in some way or help set you free in some way. And so this could really bring in, um, you know, kind of like a rebellious shift or uh, a very uh, eccentric, like exciting kind of shift with who you are and maybe your style, maybe how you present yourself in some way. And so that's gonna be really fun and exciting as well. On the 14th, Mercury is going to go direct. So Mercury is gonna be done retrograding and it's gonna start moving forward in your sign. So from the 14th till about the rest of the month, you're gonna be like really starting to implement all these lessons that you learned the first few weeks of the month with Mercury retrograding. You're, it's gonna start really making sense. You're gonna start really like connecting dots and be like, oh, like this is what I need to do or this this is what I've realized and this is how I need to implement this and this is what I need to integrate and it's just you're really going to start getting a lot more clarity from the 14th onward and so then on the 16th Jupiter and this is like the big one Jupiter is moving into your sign Taurus this is so big for you this is so huge for you this is so good for you right you've had the node in your sign which has been like an amplification of like really learning about yourself and who you are and what you desire and what you want and how you find pleasure and fulfillment and you know like really just embracing all those qualities that are you again but also showing you where you need to let go of other qualities especially attachments to other people and you know toxic situations with other people and so but now jupiter is moving into your sign to amplify your energy even more so you're going to be feeling very loud and proud to be who you are you're going to be feeling very amplified like this is going to be an evolution of who you are you're going to be feeling very abundant you're going to be feeling very fulfilled you're going to be feeling like you know things are just working out for you like there's some kind of like you know guardian angel or something or some kind of luck on your side like some kind of benevolent force that's kind of helping you right and you're going to be just like you know what this is who i am you're going to be feeling very bold and uh very just like you know like a big deal you know like this is who i am i'm embracing this i'm integrating this you're going to be seeing things from a higher perspective you may take on some of those jupiter like qualities right with jupiter being in your sign and if your rising sign is taurus then that's your identity right like that's how you see yourself so the one thing i will say the one downside to jupiter moving through your rising sign is 
everything's more, everything becomes big, right? Like, and that can include, since the ascendant does include your body, that can include your body. Like you can start like, you know, eating more. Um, and since it is the sign of Taurus, which deals with our material and earthly and physical comforts and um, pleasures, right? So you do definitely want to watch out for that because this is going to be uh, a little over a year long transit or no probably just around a year long transit actually sorry I was doing the math wrong of when Jupiter moves out which was like the beginning of next year but like it's going to be in Taurus for the rest of the year so um really really I would just say that's the only thing that I would watch for because you're going to be feeling abundant so it's going to be like you know what screw it I'm eating this I'm enjoying this um, and you may just kind of lose track of like you know like your weight or whatever if that's even a big deal to you like maybe you're trying to gain weight and that could be great for this right like so it's only if like this is something that you'd be concerned with right like it's totally just up to you but I this is known to happen when Jupiter enters the first house uh, so that's why I'm bringing this up because it's it's mainly like one of the only downsides to this. You're gonna be feeling more extravagant. The the Taurian uh, qualities and traits within you are gonna really explode. It's gonna be like I want, I can do better. I want more. I am more. I deserve this. You know, like you're really going to like have this strong sense of worth you know and this amplified sense of worth this amplified sense of like i can do whatever i want that anything is possible you know like and you're gonna be seeing maybe where you've been playing small or where you've held yourself back out of old fears or old versions of you or whatever and so it's really gonna like help you just amplify these parts of you right but um when it moves into taurus it is going to uh square pluto and aquarius uh for you know, like the first week or so uh, from the 16th onward. So this could definitely be a time where you are also seeing where you need to make some really monumental shifts and changes in terms of your career or how you present yourself in the world or your place in the world or your long-term goals and achievements, like your path, where you're headed in life. So this could be a time where it's like, you know what, big transformations need to happen because certain things aren't aligned with me anymore or, they are not aligned with my values or my worth or what I deserve, you know? And so that could start happening around the 16th and for, you know, another week or two after. So just kind of keep an eye on that as well. So on the 19th, we have the new moon in Taurus. <laughs> it won't technically be an eclipse because the nodes will be at the very, very beginning of Taurus and this new moon's happening at the very end of your sign. So, um, but this is a beautiful new moon for, you know, just bringing in that new energy. Like this is where it's like everything that you've learned, you know, up until the 19th of May is coming full circle with this new moon. Now it's time to like, the new beginning is here. The, the new shift, the new chapter is finally here, right? And so this is a time where it's like, okay, everything you've learned, this is your space to create it right now you finally can like focus it in one direction and like you know really really just embrace who you are embrace what you love embrace what you deserve embrace your quality your value your pleasure and uh put it all out there right on the 20th mars will move from cancer and into leo which is your fourth house right now this is where things could shift a little bit in other areas of your life with Mars moving into your fourth house. So you could find that there are some changes or an intense focus that begins to happen in terms of your private life, your home life, your family life, your living environment or situation, uh, maybe even some things from the past or your parents or something like that. Um, and there could be some kind of weird power struggle or dynamic that begins happening because as Mars enters uh, Leo, it's going to oppose Pluto in your 10th house of Aquarius. And so this is going to bring up some kind of weird power struggle that maybe you're feel, feeling like you're pulled in two opposite directions with your career and what you want to do in the world and your place in the world versus yourself because it's also going to square Jupiter and your sign now and versus your home and family life, right? Like the desires that you have and the changes you want to make or what you want to do or your energy is being kind of also now pulled to your home, family and personal life. And so it's kind of like pushing you to also hold more. Um, 
you know, it's it's showing you what you're really capable of and what your potential is. In the long run, I think here is what I see with this. So it's not so much like bad, although it could feel a little intense or a little bit like a power struggle or like you're being pulled in different directions towards the very end of the month, like around the 20th. But it's kind of like, okay, like that new moon happened the day before. So it's like, how much do you want this? And what needs to be faced, changed, what work needs to be done, what actions need to be taken, what needs to be changed or transformed, uh, and you can handle it, right? Like you can do it. And so that's what I really see for you around the 20th. And then at the end of the month, the sun is going to move into Gemini on the 21st. So Gemini season's gonna start and there's gonna be a little bit of a focus shift towards your finances, towards your income, your priorities, your values, uh, and you know, your resources basically uh, and that's basically it for may so let me know down below taurus what you think if you could see a lot of these things happening are you excited i'm fucking excited for you i'm excited for May, and i'm not even a taurus rising okay but like i am so excited for May. it's my 10th house and i am ready to get it on man like let's fucking go let's do this shit right like so i am so excited for you let me know down below if you're excited let me know if you watch this whole thing comment badass down below if you did i really really appreciate you make sure to share this Make sure to let everybody know about this. They need to see their horoscope for this month. And uh, come back and let me know what happens as well. Like come back and check in throughout the month. See, you know, what's going on, if it's resonating. And I love you guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Gemini Risings, welcome to your May 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So May for you, Gemini, is all about slowing the fuck down and finding a way to rest, take a break, go within, find pleasure, seclude yourself, like back the fuck up a little bit and slow down, right? Like I know that you've probably been really caught up in like career and, you know, hustling, making connections, networking, like all of this shit, right? But this is a month that in really beautiful ways is asking you to slow the fuck down, go on vacation, like go on a retreat, find time for you, right? Find time to slow down, go within, do some healing, do something that brings more pleasure and fulfillment into your life. This would be a beautiful month to like get into new healing practices, get into expanding yourself through seclusion and finding the value and quality in that. And I know at first it may be like, I don't want to do that. I'm like already in my vibe and this, that, and the other, but like I'm telling you, like, it's actually a beautiful thing. Like, you can find so much quality in rest and receiving and feminine energy and, you know, just doing things that are a little bit more slower paced and behind the scenes, right? So this is a month that's really asking you, like, can you take a step back from all of your normal day-to-day -day chaos right? And can you do things that actually fulfill you and bring more quality to your life, bring more fulfillment to your life, bring more enjoyment and pleasure to your life, right? This would be an amazing month to engage in like, you know, spiritual pleasure practices or something or uh, and spiritual embodiment practices, right? Like this is a month that is really asking you to like, hey, like take a look at like, you know, the things that you've been maybe neglecting or putting off, that is how you're going to feel the most fulfilled, right? So if you're starting to feel a little off or if you're starting to feel, you know, a little burnt out or whatever, you know, it's time to slow down. It's time to stop and smell the fucking roses. It is time to, you know, lay in the grass, get out in nature, go on some kind of secluded vacation or retreat, um, you know, seclude yourself a little bit more. Like it's okay, spend more time with yourself and pleasure <laughs> and enjoyment and fulfillment and like the beautiful things, the things that really activate you that maybe you've been neglecting for a while. And so that is what May is really, really about for you because we start off the month of May with your ruling planet Mercury retrograde in your 12th house of Taurus, right? So this tells me this is already like, you're starting the month where this is already kind of started, right? It's kind of pushing you to slow down to go within, to check back in like with what brings you a sense of quality, what brings you a sense of value, what brings you a sense of fulfillment in your life, what brings you more pleasure in your life, right? Where have you forgotten the simple things, right? Maybe they've been kind of subconscious or out of your view for a little bit, but like how can you get back in touch with those simple things that just add so much more to who you are, that help you thrive, that help you feel more like yourself, that help you uh, really take you know, things to the next level by like, you know, 
being in this place where you feel more present, you know, with your daily life or your spiritual practices or the things that actually help you feel good on the inside, right? So on the second, we're going to have the sun coming into its conjunction with Mercury, creating a Mercury Kazemi, uh, which is going to give you a lot of revelations about this. So right as we start the month, it's like, boom, you're getting insight, you're getting revelations into things that maybe you forgot, things that, you know, maybe you're revisiting or some kind of new insights that are helping you with this, that are helping with this process of like slowing down and, you know, tending to your body, tending to you know, physical things that maybe you've been putting off or, you know, things that you know are going to make you feel better and give you more value in the long run, right? Like not that your value can ever be taken away from you, right? But maybe you forgot these things. And so maybe you've been feeling like you forgot your own value or you've forgotten, you know, like how to really invest that time and energy into yourself. And so the start of the month is like, really reminding you of that, right? And then we get to the fifth and we're gonna have a Scorpio lunar eclipse in your sixth house. And so this is where it's really gonna get activated even more because you're gonna be like, whoa, you know, all this chaos, all this complexity, all this drama, all these emotions, all this intense up and down, you know, toxicity or whatever, right? Like all these things that you may be holding on to or purging or that maybe you've been kind of focused on on and off since the beginning of 2022 to do with your work life, to do with your health, to do with your day-to-day -day routines, right? Your daily tasks and responsibilities, like that stuff is coming up around the fifth. You could feel it a few days before the fifth as well, where it's like, we need to purge some of this. Like we need to clear some of this shit out. This is not fucking working, you know? Like I need to take a break. I need to go relax. I just wanna enjoy my life. I just wanna enjoy the moment. I wanna be more present instead of on this emotional intensity roller coaster with work and my schedule and my health. And you know, like how can you simplify those things? And you simplify those things by going within, by taking a break, by taking a step back, by slowing down, you know, trying to rush through it all and trying to, you know, find some complex fucking solution is not fucking helping, right? And so this is about feminine energy and abundance and, and being present right now, right? And so it's like, if you're caught up in all the chaos, it's going to show you that. And it's going to be like, look, something is revealed to you around the fifth where you're like, I, this is unhealthy or this is toxic, you know, I need to start taking breaks or I need to start getting back into my practices or rituals or, you know, like finding that that sacredness in life again, finding that beauty in, in life again, right? And, you know, you could find that, you know, the, this may be also how you take care of your health in a new way, right? So that's what's really coming up those first, that first like week or so of the month. And on the seventh, we're actually also going to have Venus uh, moving out of your sign and into Cancer, into your second house. So, you know, this really shows me that there's going to be a beautiful focus that begins to start happening on your money, finances, income, and resources. And so maybe there's been a lot of chaos at work and whatever, but it's like, through some of these breaks that you're taking, through this rest that you're getting, through taking a step back and removing yourself and focusing more on your peace and focusing more on presence and quality, it's like things start working itself out with your resources, your finances, etc. right? Your priorities. And you're able to like potentially create or come up with a lot of creative energy for your finances, for your resources, and for your career, because Venus is also going to try and Saturn, you know, when it first moves into Cancer, your second house, right? So it's like through taking that step back, things are going to work out. You just have to kind of trust, right? And I know that can be fucking difficult at times, but it's like, it's really showing you where you've been in lack in your life and where, you know, you need to start kind of implementing like new subconscious programming into your life, right? So then on the 10th, the sun is going to conjunct Uranus in your 12th house. And so this is really gonna bring up a really liberating, freeing, you know, kind of exciting energy that's like showing you innovative and new ways of it like relaxing and taking a break and resting and, you know, reprogramming yourself and, you know, just really getting back to simplicity and, and pleasure and fulfillment and enjoyment in your life. And, and so that could happen around the 10th or the few days leading up to it. So remember when I say a date, it doesn't mean that this is going to happen on that date. It's just when that transit is coming into its exact 
thing, right? It's exact placement, but uh, things can happen on the lead up to it, right? So just keep that in mind too. On the 14th, your ruling planet Mercury is finally gonna go direct after being retrograde in Taurus still in your 12th house. So from the 14th until like the rest of the month, you're gonna begin really getting a lot more clarity about what this Mercury retrograde has been about, about all those 12th house Taurian things I've been going over, resting, relaxing, enjoying yourself, reprogramming yourself for more abundance, more success, more fulfillment, more enjoyment, more pleasure, uh, more presence in your life, etc. So. Then uh, on the 16th is where we have the big dog transit of <laughs> May, which is Jupiter moving into the sign of Taurus. So now Jupiter is moving into Taurus on the 16th and will stay there for the rest of the year. So this is a beautiful, beautiful transit uh, because Taurus is ruled by Venus, which is a benefic planet, right? And also um, it's a beautiful sign, right? And so Jupiter is gonna be moving into your 12th house, which is gonna be mean that you're going to expand even more in your 12th house. And it's gonna be a theme you're gonna notice on and off for the rest of the year of you really learning how to implement and integrate what you're learning this month for the rest of the year, right? Doesn't mean that you can't you know, dive into work or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying, but you're gonna learn how to do that while, while also going with the flow, while also trusting and relaxing and taking breaks and letting go and, you know, allowing yourself to receive, allowing yourself to, to find enjoyment and pleasure in your life. And so it's really a beautiful energy. And so you could start diving into new practices, new, you know, really just seeing new ways of doing things in this area and it could really benefit your career or what you learn could be implemented towards your career in some way or you could create something with it uh, in some way, shape or form. And so it really is going to be a uh, beautiful energy. You also may meet new people, new relationships, things like that from far away places. This may be a time where you're wanting to travel more. This may be a time where you start meeting other like minded people like you or um, you and a partner start getting into some of these practices, things like that. So just watch out for that. But it is going to create some massive change when it moves into Taurus, you know, from the 16th, you know, for a couple weeks as Jupiter will square Pluto in your ninth house. Uh, and so this is going to create some massive transformation in your belief systems, in your travel pursuits, in how you see the world, what you desire and want out of the world, how you find purpose and meaning in your life, and educational pursuits. So that's why I'm saying a lot of this too, because that Jupiter is going to square Pluto in your ninth as it moves into Taurus. And so it's going to somehow affect this, this major transformation that's happening uh, with your belief systems, worldviews, etc. So then on the 19th, we're going to have the Taurus new moon, which is going to be beautiful. It's a, a new beginning coming in, a new seed being planted that is going to bring in a lot of what we just worked on for the weeks prior, right? So from the beginning of May until the 19th of May, it's like this is where it's all kind of coming into a focused new beginning for us. Like a new chapter is starting here and it's like, okay, like this we're going to be very clear on what we need to do, what the path is moving forward as that new moon happens and as we keep going uh, after the new moon. And so it's going to be a really like uh, fulfilling new beginning that's bringing in abundance and fulfillment and uh, more pleasure and, and quality into our lives in some way. Then on the 20th, Mars is going to move into Leo, which is your third house. And so this is going to be a time where you could be feeling a lot more creative and a lot more expressive and a lot more like wanting to express your personality and express, you know, who you are and uh, maybe like really get out and, you know, mingle with other people, you know, like go to a drama show or go to a theater, or, you know, you may be feeling a little more theatrical in your self-expression and, you know, whatever it is that you're creating or the environments that you're hanging out with in some way. And Mars is also going to oppose Pluto as it moves in, but it's also going to square Jupiter again in your 12th house. And so this is going to be like a potential power struggle that comes up here a little bit through you kind of transforming your belief systems and your worldviews, but also what you know, you know, like this is going to be a time where it's like, you know, you may start really changing what you think or how you see things, your mindset, you know, like it, it really could be a time where it's like you start kind of seeing uh, a new potential. There's a powerful new potential, powerful new shift 
that is kind of rising here with this as Mars enters Leo on the 20th and you know it, it may happen for a few days after that too. Uh, so that's going to be really interesting. And then on the 21st is Gemini season. So the sun will move into your sign and your season will start. And then there will be a huge focus that shifts to you and your identity and how you're showing up in the world and your body and, and how you express yourself. So that is what I'm seeing for you this month in May, Gemini. Let me know down below what you think, what's going on and uh, how you're feeling about all of this. I'd really, really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you watch this whole thing comment badass down below make sure to send this and share this with your friends your family etc and i will see you guys in my next one answer Bye. risings may is a month for you where you are going to see the beautiful qualities and blessings and gains from your connections your networking the people that you are associated with this is a time where you're really going to start really seeing how abundance and blessings and you know just different ways of gaining new things gaining you know new uh, value new qualities etc through the connections that you have through the connections in your life through networking can really come into play in your life and so it's gonna be a really exciting month that is going to really expand you in terms of your network in terms of your connections in terms of you know your place in the world and opening you up to more valuable connections, more valuable and quality connections and people and situations in your life. And so it's going to be a really exciting month. So let's get into it. So we start off the month already in Mercury retrograde. Mercury is retrograding in your 11th house of Taurus. And so this is a time where you're really reflecting here on your connections, on the quality that the people in your life bring to you and how they can support you and how you can receive from the people in your life and how you can really bring value to some of the people in your life and how they can bring value and quality into something that you're working on or something that you're focused on, right? Especially career related and uh, especially to do with something that you may be doing for you or something that you may be doing behind the scenes as well. So on the second, the sun and Mercury are gonna come into what we call a Kazemi. They're gonna conjunct Mercury is going to be retrograde, so this is the 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 Mercury Kazemi that we're going to be having, where you're really going to start realizing uh, a lot of different things about this Mercury retrograde. Like things are going to start clicking, puzzle pieces are going to start fitting. You know, you may be introduced to someone new. You may someone from your past may come back around, or an old connection, or something like that. Like something is kind of clicking here, right? Uh, the first couple days of May. So definitely watch out for that because it's going to be important and it's going to deal with this like bigger Mercury retrograde cycle that we're in right now. So on the fifth, we're going to have the Scorpio lunar eclipse and this is happening in your fifth house. Now you've been learning karmic lessons in your fifth house of Scorpio for the last year and a half almost now. Since like January, February of 2022, you know, all last year and all this year so far, you've been learning these really karmic lessons to do with uh, fun <laughs> to do with, you know, potentially fun that is toxic, you know, also different topics to do with your sexuality and toxicity there, toxicity in dating, you know, holding on to old things, things that need to be purged and let go of, you know, the type of people that you're attracted to, maybe some things with children as well, you know, just old karmic things or patterns or struggles or complex situations that are intense and emotional and all over the place and, you know, just kind of very chaotic, right? It's like you've been letting go of chaos in these areas, whether it be how you like to have fun or how you experience fun. You know, maybe you were a big partier and you started realizing how chaotic it was or, you know, you were doing things for fun, but you realize that they're kind of toxic or chaotic at times. And so you've learned, you know, how to kind of let some of these things go and, you know, simplify your life and, and what the, the value is in having good people and good connections in your life and having, you know, good friends and like-minded people that have goals and that, you know, really are stable and not so chaotic, right? Um, and you've also potentially been learning, like I said, karmic lessons to do with dating and sexuality and, you know, things like that as well. And so, but this lunar eclipse in Scorpio is bringing a lot of that up again. It's like the last big purge of like, what else do you need to let go of that's kind of toxic, that's kind of chaotic to do with your love life, to do with 
sexuality, to do with, um, you know, chaotic situations that maybe you used to get fun out of or enjoyment out of, but that are just no longer really there for you, right? Again, for some of you, if you have children, this could deal with children as well. Like maybe you've realized, you know, how there's too much complexity or chaos or old toxic traits about yourself in terms of how you parent your children or something, right? Like, um, and so this definitely can be bringing a lot of that up on the Scorpio lunar eclipse because this is like, hey, it's time to let go of this. It's time to make changes. It's time to liberate yourself. It's time to free yourself from old shame, old resentments, old attachments that are toxic, chaotic, and just too messy, you know, and like find more pleasure in life, be more present with people, uh, you know, find more enjoyment and, you know, the connections that do give you a sense of value that are leading you somewhere that are gaining, like helping you gain in your life. And so that's going to be really big uh, around the fifth and leading up to the fifth uh, for the Scorpio lunar eclipse. So then on the seventh, Venus is going to move into your sign and it's going to be there for the rest of the month. So this is going to be a time where you're really going to be feeling those Venusian qualities, right? It's going to be all about like, you know, you really focused on, uh, you know, yourself and maybe your image and how you present yourself and your style and your beauty and, you know, how you, how you decorate yourself basically like your body. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, this could be a time where you're wanting to change your style, where you're feeling like you know more in pleasure you're feeling better about yourself you're feeling lively you're feeling uh you know just more of a sense of enjoyment and play and uh you know fun and maybe you're more focused on your relationships and your uh you know different connections in your life where you really relate to other people so then on the 10th the sun is going to join uranus in taurus and this could definitely be a time where you are, you know, maybe announcing something or coming out with something or meeting some really unconventional people or up leveling your connections in some way and and really embodying a new sense of of who you are in the world or who you are in terms of a group of people or who you are in terms of you know, your inner circle or other connections that you have. So this could be a time for a really exciting new opportunity, an exciting new gain that's coming into your life or an exciting a new epiphany or realization or idea that you're having, but something kind of exciting and, and interesting and uh, maybe a little bit unconventional or surprising is coming in around the 10th. It could be a couple days before as well. So do keep that in mind. So then uh, on the 13th, Venus um, is going to trine Saturn uh, from your first house into your uh, eighth house. I'm sorry, ninth house of uh, higher education, learning pursuits, et cetera. So this could definitely be a time where you begin to really find an interest in maybe learning something new or traveling, or you're getting very serious about learning something new or traveling or expanding your, your faith in some way, expanding your viewpoint in some way. And then on the 14th, Mercury is going to go direct and no longer be retrograde in your 11th. So from the 14th on, you know, for basically the rest of the month, you're going to start really making sense of the few weeks before. You're going to really start, like things are going to start really becoming clear about, you know, your life and about your, your networking situation, the connections in your life, um, and what thing, like what they're bringing to the table. And uh, yeah, you're going to start making sense of all that. Then on the 16th is where the big transit of this month and year happens. One of the big transits of this year, at least. Jupiter is moving into Taurus. Like this is so bomb, so amazing. So Jupiter is moving into your 11th house. And so this is going to be an amplified expansion in terms of your network you know, your connections. I know I keep saying that, but that's, like I said, that's what this month is really, really focused on. So you are going to grow so immensely in terms of the opportunities that are brought to you through other people, the value that is brought to you through other people, the quality, the, the, the just different things that are brought to you through other people. And a lot of these things are going to be actually tangible, physical things because this is Taurus, a material earthly sign. And they're going to be fulfilling and enjoyable and, and, you know, and you just have to learn how to receive them basically. Right. So 
your networking, the way that you interact with other people and other people that you meet, different circles that you kind of come into contact with, different people that you begin to know are really going to be very beneficial for you for the rest of the year on and off, right? Because Jupiter is going to stay here for the rest of the year. So, you know, you could get really into promoting, really into marketing, really into working in teams or working with other people or, you know, opportunities coming in through people that you know and, you know, just through good qualitative consistent people, right? And that is what this is really teaching you, like the quality, the value that other people bring into your life and are they steady, are they consistent, are they solid, are they dependable, right? And um, you're going to know that through all these lessons we've been learning with the node in Taurus for the last year and a half now. So uh, Jupiter will square Pluto as it moves into Taurus, though, for a couple weeks. That is going to, you know, be a lot about you kind of transforming, uh, going through a major transformation financially uh, through your connections with other people in some way. And so this could be something to do with business, something to do with like, you know, this is going to be really, really great for you if you're a Cancer rising and getting into business. I know I said in your 2023 horoscope that this is going to be like a year for you, like, like CEO year for you, right? Like freaking business owner, entrepreneurial, like freaking manager, leader, all of that, right? Kind of year for you if you're a Cancer rising. So it's really gonna introduce you to, I think, a lot of business I, I, for a, as a Cancer rising or a lot of financial uh, gains and connections through these other people and really transform how you see wealth and abundance and how you work with other people financially uh, because the eighth house deals with other people's finances and the 11th house deals with other people, right? So it, it's kind of like mixing the two and gonna create some big change for you here. Right. So then on the 19th, we're going to have the new moon in Taurus. And this is going to be a new beginning, seeds, new seeds being planted um, where everything that you've worked on for the, the, the from the beginning of the May, from the beginning of May until the 19th of the new moon, it's all going to be kind of coming to this point of like, this is the new beginning. This is the new chapter. This is where it all kind of comes together and starts. Right. And so it's going to be a really beautiful, abundant new beginning. That's going to feel really fulfilling with the people that, you know, the good people in your life and uh, the connections that you're making that are really helping you and, and, uh, you know, collaborations and all of that, a lot of opportunities coming in here for you if you're Cancer rising this month. So then on the 20th, we're going to have Mars moving into the sign of Leo and out of your sign. Okay, so then there's gonna be a massive shift in energy that's being put towards money, income, and finances. Now, this is where things could get a little bit, you know, turbulent here because it's going to oppose Pluto in your eighth house, but they're both also gonna square Jupiter still in your 11th house. And so this is kind of, for me, I see this T-square as, you know, seeing our potential and maybe having to make some hard decisions or hard changes or deal with some, some areas where we're being pulled in two different directions. But with Jupiter in the mix, it's going to be a beneficial outcome. It's going to be beneficial if we can see it from a higher perspective, if we can step into our potential, step into the abundance, step into, you know, a higher form of who we are, step into our wisdom, uh, then we can work through this, right? And so there may be some kind of, you know, push or pull or power dynamic that starts happening here in terms of, you know, your income, your resources, you know, what you desire and who you are in terms of those things versus other people's, you know, resources and money and, and shared resources and finances with other people. And so, um, again, though, like this can be resolved, um, I, I feel, with Jupiter in the mix. And so watch out for that from like the 20th to the 25th. Um, that's going to be the time where that could come up. Um, so, and let me know how that goes as well, because I'm interested to know. So on the 21st, Gemini season starts, the sun moves into Gemini, and there will be kind of a, a shift after that for you as a Cancer rising from the 21st and moving into Gemini season. This is going to be a little bit of a shift, like not much. You're still going to have Jupiter and Taurus and all of that, um, but there is going to be more of a shift in focusing on your mental health, focusing on healing, focusing on maybe taking a break, you know, or um, kicking back or learning how to go with the flow, learning how to trust, you know, um, you know, just taking a step back to folk get your mind right for a little bit or taking a break or, you know, maybe doing some things for you in seclusion or away from 
all of the other stuff that's going on in your life in some way. Um, so it's really gonna kind of push you there, right? Like you may not have the same amount of energy to keep exerting or giving or the same vitality um, if you don't, right? So it's asking you like, can you take a step back? Can you rest? Can you let, you know, things figure themselves out for a little bit so you can implement and integrate some things, um, get your energy back, get your energy right, right? So that is what I see for you if you are a Cancer rising. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening. Let me know throughout the month if this ends up resonating. Come back and watch this if you need to. I'd love, love, love to hear how your month goes. I'd love to hear your feedback. This is such an exciting month for you. So I'd really, really love to hear what's going on for you if you're a Cancer rising. Comment badass down below if you watched this whole thing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Leo freaking risings, my fellow Leo risings, bam, this is a month, May is a month, I'm going to need you to come here, I'm going to need you to come the fuck here, I'm going to need you to sit the fuck down, okay, and I want you to just take in every fucking bit of this, I want you to take in May, like it is just everything you've been waiting for for months, okay, because that is exactly what it is, boo, this freaking month is so fucking powerful for us, it is so good for us, it is just it is the highlight of like so much, right? Like it is going to be such a like evolutionary month. So much progress, so much opportunity, so much success is about to start coming to us. I want you to really, really, really like embrace that. Okay. I want you to be present with that because it's fucking happening. Okay. If you have been lost for a little bit, uh, with your career, with your life path, with your long-term goals, with your future self and what you want for your future and all of that, like this is the month that is tying it all up for you. Okay. Like just get ready. Just get fucking ready. That's all you need to do is brace yourselves and embrace this fucking energy. And it is going to happen by you slowing the fuck down and you letting yourself create okay? You letting yourself step into creator mode because that is what's happening this month, all right? So we start off May, okay, with Mercury being retrograde in Taurus in our 10th house, okay? So towards the end of April, we started kind of like, you know, really getting some ideas, really rethinking, really getting new ideas on our career, business, long-term goals, you know, our future, what we really want and value out of life. Like, what, why are we here? What are we creating in this life? Where are we going in this life, right? And how to do that, right? We've been stuck on the how. We've been stuck on like how to make shit happen and just confused, right? And this month is gonna show it to us, right? It's already started showing it to us by the end of April with Mercury going retrograde. It's been a time of like reestablishing who we are in the world, what we want and desire in the world, what we want in terms of our career, what we want in terms of our long-term game here, our long-term success, our brand, like, you know, whatever, right? And so we start off May in that energy where we're still kind of reflecting for the first couple weeks of May and revisiting old things and revisiting like this energy of like what we want to create in our lives and what we want to create in the world and the legacy we want to leave behind and all of that. And so right on the second though, and you could experience this like on the first or second, uh, but we're going to have the Mercury Kazemi. So the sun and Mercury are going to get together in the sky. Mercury retro is retrograde, right? So this is going to illuminate to us certain ideals, certain information, certain connections, certain epiphanies that we have in terms of our career and where we're going, our path, our goals, you know, where we're headed in the world, what we want to create in the world, all of that. It's going to start revealing that to us at this time. This is going to be like the first, first reveal, right? We may have had some things come to us up until this point, but this is going to be like, whoa, like, okay, I know what I need to do, or I'm starting to know what I need to do. I'm getting more and more clear on like what the path forward is, right? So then on the fifth, we're going to have a Scorpio lunar eclipse. And let me fucking tell you, okay, let me tell you, all right, for the last year and a half, with the south node moving through Scorpio and these Scorpio fucking eclipses that have been really dark, difficult, turbulent, and really shown us what we are attached to in terms of our past, in terms of our home lives, in terms of lack, in terms of scarcity, in terms of our childhoods, in terms of our parents, in terms of our families, in terms of our personal and private lives, right? Like the skeletons in our closet, we've had to really face a lot of old fears from the past. We've had to really face a lot of old attachments from the past. We've had to really face a lot of old junk, right? From the past and really clean these things out, really face these things, really get like vulnerable and honest in our personal lives and 
really see where the lack is coming from and like where our foundations or our personal lives, our behind the scenes lives, whether it be your family, your relationship, your past, like whatever it is that has been hold, like you've been holding on to because you feel shameful for it or it's messy or chaotic or complicated or you haven't been focused on your personal life or what's going on behind the scenes in your life, right? Like we've had these two polarities of like our public life, where we're going in the world, our career, our goals, our future, right? versus our private sector, right? Like what we kind of keep hidden or what we kind of don't want to face or, you know, family stuff, past stuff, you know, like the darker, deeper, more personal and private areas of life that we would rather not like put on blast or share all the time, right? We've had to really learn how to face these things because we can't keep up leveling. We can't keep expanding, right, into this future that we want while we're being held down by all this baggage of the past or all this you know, chaotic, messy shit in our personal lives, right? So we've had to really like face that shit. So this Scorpio lunar eclipse on the fifth is bringing that up. It's like the last and final purge of shit that we need to just break ourselves free from, right? We need to liberate ourselves from old emotions, old fears, old whatever, right? Old things that are holding us back. Shame, guilt, resentment, attachments, toxicity in the family, in the home life, toxicity with parents, toxicity with the past, toxicity with whatever, whatever is going on in our personal life that feels chaotic and intense and all over the place. Like we want peace in our lives. Like as a Leo rising, Taurus in the 10th house, this is about finding peace, stability, consistency, value, quality, and letting go of, you know, turbulent chaotic, messy, personal situations that we want to shy away from a lot of times or we want to hide or we don't want to focus on, especially to do with home and family, right? So that is what's going to be coming up for this Scorpio lunar eclipse on the 5th. You could start noticing that in the days leading up to it. It may bring up something else that you need to let go of that you haven't wanted to face that feels icky, that feels like dark and dirty or chaotic or messy or whatever, you know? family situation, home situation, personal situation, past situation, whatever it is, right? So then on the seventh, Venus is going to move into Cancer, our, our 12th house. So this is going to be a time where we may be feeling a little bit more like, you know, rest, relax, being, getting really interested in things going on behind the scenes, getting interested in maybe spiritual pursuits, vacations, getting away, you know, like just kind of feeling and finding more pleasure and seclusion and getting away and, and spending time with people that we have deep bonds with, connecting and deeply bonding with ourselves, you know, catching up on rest, going on vacation, you know, going on different pursuits that really bring us a sense of uh, pleasure and enjoyment into our lives. And so on the 10th, the sun is going to conjunct Uranus. And this is going to be a really exciting kind of expose kind of time. It's going to be a time where we're really like, you know what? New brand identity or new identity in the world or, or time to elevate who I am and up level who I am in the world and um, come out with some, you know, start like embodying a more unconventional, a more quirky or innovative side of ourselves, right? And not being afraid to really express like freedom and authenticity and like all of that in the world. And so that's going to be really exciting. It could also bring in new paths or new opportunities, like a, a new chance to really step out of our comfort zone in some way um, and do something kind of different and exciting in terms of career and our long-term goals in our future. It could also be a time where we get some visions of our future, visions of our path, where we want to go and, and all of that. So watch out for that around the 10th. Again, it could also happen in like a couple days leading up to that. And then on the 14th, Mercury will go direct. So it will no longer be retrograding in our 10th. So from here on out, we start getting really, really majorly clear. Like this is when all the puzzle pieces start falling together about what we want for our future, what we want out of our lives, what we want in terms of career, where we're going, the kind of quality, value, consistency, beauty, fulfillment, pleasure that we want to start bringing into our career, bringing into our goals, bringing into our future, right? Like that future vision is getting more and more clear from the 14th on. I mean, it's starting to get clear before that, but from the 14th on is where we really start getting clear even more, like where we start implementing what we're getting clear about, right? 
Then on the 16th is the big dog transit of this month. That is so freaking good. It's such a good transit. I'm so excited for this. Like I truly fucking am. And this is when Jupiter, the most benefic fucking planet in astrology that brings opportunities, gains, insights, integration, big high level new beginnings and opportunities is moving into our 10th house of career, future, long-term goals, what we want out of life. The It's like our North Star, right? Like where we're going, like this is what we want to build in the world. This is what we want to create in the world. This is what like we're after in this life, right? And Jupiter is moving in there. So this is going to be the time where we can finally start implementing the lessons we've been learning with our career, with our long-term goals, with our future, with what we want to create in the world. For We've been learning lessons here for the past year and a half since like Jan, end of January 2022 when the node, North Node moved into Taurus. So it's been a massive focus. It's shown us a lot and we've maybe implemented a lot, but it's not really necessarily been a time for figuring it all out or acting on it all. But now that Jupiter is moving into Taurus, this is where the action starts happening. This is where the big, bold, expansive things start coming in that we start implementing. So from the 16th until the rest of this year, we're gonna have the rest of this fucking year after May 16th to really go big or go home in our career. Like this is the time, right? This is the time. This may be a time where you want to expand, where you want to up level, where you want to evolve and grow even more in terms of what you can do in the world, what you can create in the world. <clears throat> you know, this could be a time where you decide I'm fucking changing careers and doing this just because I know I'm worth it. I know I can. Like this is showing us our fucking potential and what we can create what we can do in this life, in this world. And so this is going to be so freaking big, right? Like it's going to bring so much optimism, so much desire, so much pleasure, so much fulfillment, so much creativity, so much potential and what, and our ability to go after our goals, go after the future that we want, create the life that we want, right? Go after our career and expand our career. This is going to be opportunities that are career related start coming in like all kinds of different things right and they're going to be very good financially because jupiter rules our eighth house right it also rules our fifth house so something that we're passionate about something that we actually like get fired up about that actually brings us joy like this is just going to be so big so big for us right so when Jupiter moves into Taurus, it is going to square Pluto in the seventh house. And so this big, long-term, future, big level, you know, expansion that is coming in for us in terms of our career and our long-term goals and what we want to create in life is also having a really positive impact and, and transformation and change and shift on our relationships, right? And so our partner, other people in our lives, it could even have something to do with like clients or dealing with other people, we can find that we're making a huge impact or changing and helping other people change and transform their lives in some way. Um, yeah, it's just going to be really huge. So then on the 19th, the new moon in Taurus fucking happens, baby. And so this new moon is where it all fucking starts. Like the new chapter begins right after Jupiter moves into Taurus a couple days later. This is where like the actual official like new beginning, new chapter, new boom, you know, like we've been reflecting, we've got pieces of all of what we want to do, what we desire, all of that for the last year and a half. And now it's all kind of coming to this head, all coming to this new moon in Taurus where it's like, we're taking off fucking point blank period, baby. Like we are taking the fuck off. As you can tell, I am so excited as a Leo rising for this fucking month astrologically. And I feel it. I feel it building. Like, I don't know if you do. Let me know if you do down below, but like damn like this this is the fucking month i feel like we've been waiting for for a long fucking time man like so on the 20th mars is moving into our sign and this is also fucking exciting now there are some downsides to this that we're going to go over though so mars is going to move into our sign that means for the rest of may and even into june we are going to be feeling assertive in charge fucking like go time you know like action oriented we are going to be doing all the things taking all the fucking actions we are going to be feeling confident. We are going to be feeling a lot more humorous. We're going to be feeling a lot more driven, right? The downside of this, though, is that when it first moves in for a few days from the 20th to the 25th, it's going to oppose Pluto in our seventh, which could bring up some power struggles in terms of who we are versus our significant other or other people. Um, and it also is going to make a T-square with Jupiter up in our 10th house. And so it is saying that we can rise above this. We can find the middle ground if we choose to. But at first, it could feel a little bit like, 
I need to be who I am, but this relationship or other people are making me feel like I need to change who I am and I'm not doing that. These are fixed signs, so they're like stubborn. They don't want to fucking change, right? Um, so there could be a little bit of an intense power struggle that starts forming between uh, what we want and who we are versus our relationships in some way versus who we are in the world and where we're going and what we want out of life, you know? So that could happen for a few days, but all in all, Mars in our sign is going to be very great. We're going to be feeling more confident, more assertive, more aggressive, and like really no bullshit. Like this is what I'm doing. We're going to be feeling very active. This is going to be a time where a lot of Leo Risings are going to want to get back in the gym, want to start exercising, want to start doing something with all the energy that they have. We're going to be feeling very large and in charge <laughs> by the end of May. And um, another thing though that I want to say with Mars moving into Leo on May 20th, again, it's going to be in there a lot of June too. So like you do want to just like remember that you may be in a place where you are uh, easily irritated, more angry, right? This can bring up anger. This can bring up confrontation. You may be more confrontational. You may be a little more like, you know, uh, in ego and full of yourself, right? And so you do want to watch out for that because you may find that you start just picking fights to pick fights because you just don't give a fuck, right? Like um, that you are just saying whatever the fuck you want or doing whatever the fuck you want and not considering other people or your relationships or you're being a little bit too aggressive and too embracive and, you know, all of that. So just watch out for that. That is the downside. But overall, I'm, I'm excited for Mars and Leo. So uh, and then on the 21st, sun is going to move into Gemini. And so Gemini season is going to begin. And then we're going to have a, a huge focus on our networking, you know, meeting new people, meeting new connections and, and um, how we can network, how we can meet new people, you know. So a, a massive networking thing is going to start at the very end of the month uh, on the 21st onward as we get into Gemini season. We're going to be really you know, meeting new people, getting involved in new groups of people, promoting, marketing, you know, all of that, dealing with groups that we may already be in of like-minded people. Um, so anyways, that is what I see for us, Leo Rising. Let me know down below if you are excited too. Hopefully I pumped you up because you need to be pumped up. This is a big fucking deal, okay? This is a big deal, right? So take advantage of it. Let me know down below. Uh, if you watch this whole thing, comment badass down below. Make sure to share this with your friends. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Virgo, let's do this. Welcome to your May 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So May for you is gonna be a really different month coming in that's gonna be really focused on your long-term purpose, your long-term faith like what gives you a sense of purpose faith and belief in yourself and in the world right and what it is that you want to actually do with your life what it is that you desire to build within your life that's going to give you a sense of faith purpose and and belief right and so this could be a time where you are really rethinking like should i be going back to school should i be doing more what else is there for me in my life like where else do i want to go what else do i want to achieve what else do i want to have in my life like what kind of education do I want? Do I want to learn more things? Do I want to travel? Do I need to see new places, you know? And it's kind of coming to this like understanding of like where you can provide more quality to <clears throat> maybe other people through like education or teaching or mentorship or, you know, something along those lines. And this is because your ruling planet Mercury is retrograding <laughs> in Taurus in your ninth house. And then we're also going to have Jupiter uh, entering Taurus in the middle of this month as well. And so this is a very Taurus focused month for the most part. And that's your ninth house of your belief systems, where you find your value in life, where you find your, your sense of quality and pleasure and enjoyment in life. So this is going to be a month where you're kind of being asked to like get back to the basics, get back to like what feels good for you, your normal, consistent, stable outlook on life, something that really helps you slow down and, and find more quality and value in life. And so, um, but with your ruling planet Mercury retrograding here, there's even more of this kind of like, you know, going back and rethinking and reflecting and revisiting some of your belief systems and what you've learned and your outlook on the world, your outlook, your views on your life, your views on religion, your long-term beliefs and things like that. 
And so you could be revisiting like old belief systems or old ways of simplifying your outlook and adding more quality to your outlook on life and what you feel is purposeful in your life. And so that is really a lot of what this month is about for you. So on the second, we're going to have the Mercury Kazemi. So the sun and Mercury retrograde are going to get together in your ninth. So this is going to give you a big piece of the puzzle here right around the second. You're going to kind of land with like some information, some kind of news, some kind of new outlook, some kind of new perception, you know, some kind of new way of maybe looking at something that you've already looked at previously or a realization that you've already had, but it's going to give you a new way of looking at it, right? And so you're going to be like, wow, okay, I'm looking at it from a whole new way now, or this has illuminated a whole new perception or a whole new perspective for me, or maybe there's some kind of information or news that comes in that really like helps you feel like you're, you're, solving something in this area when it comes to your purpose your beliefs getting out of your comfort zone you know what you want to do in your life what gives you a sense of purpose meaning and and faith and optimism in your life and so and how you connect to your faith as well right like are you embodied in what you have faith in are you embodied are you practicing what you preach basically right this is kind of also something that could come up here and then right around the fifth the scorpio lunar eclipse is going to happen and this is going to be kind of like a final purge of maybe toxic places environments people day-to-day -day things in your life that may feel chaotic or that feel messy uh or that just aren't really aligned with you and don't add more of simplicity to your life like you're trying to simplify your outlook on life you're trying to simplify your beliefs and come up with a new outlook that really brings you more simplicity ease peace flow pleasure enjoyment in your life and so the scorpio lunar eclipse on the fifth is coming in to say okay to get to that sense of ease we need to maybe face some chaotic intense difficult or darker topics that we've been putting off or maybe there's some environments or maybe there's some you know uh, people places and things you've been consuming that are just not good for you that you need to kind of like flush out get rid of purge yourself from right so that's going to happen around the fifth so then uh, on the 10th we're going to have the sun coming into its conjunction with uranus and so this is going to kind of illuminate even more of this up leveling and your outlook on life your outlook on the world your belief systems your educational pursuits potentially travel you know this could be a really exciting new thing that's coming in for you where you like are seeing something and in, in totally new and innovative ways and it's giving you a lot of ideas and insight and excitement and inspiration right around the tent so definitely be on the lookout for that so then uh, on the 14th your ruling planet mercury is going to go direct in the sign of Taurus. So it's no longer gonna be retrograde. So you're gonna finally be like moving forward, connecting dots, you know, uh, putting puzzle pieces together, making connections with what you've been learning um, up until the 14th with this Mercury retrograde. So from there on out, you're gonna start feeling more normal. Things are not gonna be feeling all over the place since you're ruled by Mercury. Mercury retrogrades definitely affect you a lot more. So you're gonna start feeling like, oh, okay, this is what I was learning and this is how I can start making sense of it. And this is what this was about, right? Like, and this is how I can start integrating it into my life, right? So then on the 16th, Jupiter is gonna move into Taurus and this is gonna be so amazing. I'm so excited for this. This is your ninth house. So this is gonna be a massive opportunity for the rest of the year with Jupiter in your ninth of growing, expanding, elevating, right? Amplifying how you bring about like the sacred callings in your life, how you find those sacred callings. Are you on those sacred callings? Are you on the path to what you are feeling called to do, right? Are you honoring that, right? What are your values in the world? How can you bring more simplicity into your life, more abundance into your life through your education, through your, your sacred callings, through um, your belief systems, right? And so this could be a massive, massive time where you start having a lot of opportunity and growth here uh, to finally really nail down, like, what is it do you believe? What beliefs are going to bring more simplicity, ease, flow, pleasure, embodiment, enjoyment, fulfillment into your life uh, that really bring this state of ease and, and peace into your life, right? And so how can you simplify things, right? 
So that's going to be really big for you. And it's going to be squaring Pluto in your six. So this may also offer a massive transformation in terms of your work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. You know, your views, beliefs, educational pursuits, travel could change, which starts to change something into your, in your career, or not your career, sorry, in your work, job, and day-to-day -day routines and health. It's like, wait, the way that I've been going about my day-to-day -day routines, my job, my work, et cetera, does not align with this new belief system or this my my normal belief systems like the the sacred callings that I have in the world that feel really important and special and valuable to me and so this could be an opportunity to really shift some things in that area so on the 19th we're going to have the new moon happening in Taurus again in your ninth house and so this is like a new beginning that's happening that's really wrapping up the last few weeks of May um, where everything like a new chapter is starting here with your belief systems, how you view things in the world, um, you know, like your educational pursuits, teaching, mentorship, um, learning, etc. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And then on the 20th, Mars is going to enter Leo, which is your 12th house. And this is going to be a big deal because this is going to be a time where your energy is going to be a little bit more uh, focused on the parts of you that you don't express or the parts of you that you haven't shown to other people where you're not allowing yourself to shine. You could find yourself kind of doing things for yourself more, doing things behind the scenes more, um, you know, focus, focusing your energy on things that feel authentic and good to you that make you that, that help you feel that sense of confidence and worthiness in yourself. This could be spiritual pursuits. This could be letting go of certain things, cutting off certain things that are just not who you are anymore, right? And so at first though, this Ma when, when Mars enters Leo from the 20th to the 25th, it's going to oppose Pluto in your sixth though. So it could be a time where you're also letting go of certain habits, uh, letting go of, you know, certain ways of doing things in your day-to-day -day life with your work and health that are not aligned with you and so there could be like a power struggle where you feel like maybe something going on in your job work or health life is somehow in some kind of power struggle with like your who you are um or you haven't been expressing who you are so this is like your chance to change that and start expressing more of who you are in your day-to-day -day life and in your job work and, and health um so uh, this could also bring up like letting go of habits or patterns you know and facing those um, so you can really kind of see your full potential, right? So then on the 21st, we are going to start Gemini season, uh, which is your 10th house. So from the 21st onward, there's going to be a, kind of like a shift in the energy where career and long-term goals are going to become more of a focus. And it could be because of changes going on in your work and in your job and things like that. And so, um, you know, you're going to start thinking more like long-term and career and you know, your future and things like that. And so anyways, that is what I'm seeing for you this month, Virgo. Definitely let me know down below if any of this resonated. If you could see any of this happening, I would really, really love to know if you made it all the way through this, make sure to comment badass. And I would love to hear your feedback on what you're experiencing this month, especially how you're noticing this Taurus ninth house energy coming up. Like I really want to know how you're seeing that come up. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Libra Excellent. Risings, May 2023 for you is a month where if you've been waiting on money, honey, it is coming, honey. Like the abundance is coming, honey, in May. So just, just be prepared. This Taurus season is bestowing so much abundance and just so many beautiful things. I'm just, I'm so excited to talk about it. So let's get into it. So we start off the month already being in a Mercury retrograde. Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Taurus, which is inviting you into more pleasure, flow, abundance, consistency, stability, security in your life, especially with your finances, business, investments, shared money and resources. This is a time that is like, you know, you could really be reflecting on these things. Maybe you're doing your taxes and you're going back through and looking at everything. Or maybe you're like, you know what? Like I'm so sick of being in this like scarcity, fear-based place with money. And I know like I need to really change my mindset on money, right? Like, and so you could really be kind of like revisiting old things or really rethinking your mindset on 
money in general and, and abundance and, and deals and, and shared connections, shared resources, shared money and, and financial opportunities, investments and things. Now, I would say the first couple of weeks is not the time to make any big moves just yet. That time is coming towards middle of May, but not just yet. Like I would wait, this is a great time to be reflecting on your mindset towards money and reflecting on your investments and abundance and all of the things, right? But not a great time to be like making huge changes, right? Like especially new changes. So on the second, you're going to get a massive epiphany, download, you know, realization, maybe even some news or some information could come in somehow that deals with this though, where you're like getting kind of more and more clear on what needs to shift or how you can change things like a strategy maybe even for changing things in terms of your wealth and how you want to build wealth and how you want to deal with other people and their wealth and connect or share or whatever right business investing etc so that could really happen right on the second and then on the fifth we're going to have a scorpio lunar eclipse in your second house and this is going to be this final purge of like old fears scarcity worry like attachments to resources, finances, assets, possessions, you know, whatever it is that's really holding you back with your own money, resources, possessions, your own feelings about those things and attachments like toxic attachments or lack in your life that you're kind of clinging to, you know, because maybe like your whole life or like on and off throughout your childhood, you've like learned a lot of lack, you've learned a lot of scarcity, like it's been you know, and you've been really kind of going through and releasing these things on and off over like the last year and a half since like end of January 2022. There's been a massive on and off focus here with the south node moving through your second. So you're purging a lot of that. You're letting a lot of that go. And so this lunar eclipse is really coming in to like be that final bang, that final purge. Like, bitch, this needs to go. We need to cut this shit off. You know, like we got to stop worrying. We got to stop living in fear over money or we got to stop with this scarcity shit, right? <laughs> That's what this is coming at. It's like revealing where you're still in scarcity, revealing where you're still in lack, revealing where you are worried about loss or whatever, right? Um, because it's really pushing you into a space of abundance, of being in this abundant place. And you can be, you are worthy of that. You are fucking capable of that. So like, just fucking let it happen, like do it, you know? So anyway, and then on the seventh, Venus, your ruling planet is going to enter Cancer, which is your 10th house, baby. So this is gonna be like a lot of like interest and a lot of potentially business and money related things happening in terms of your career, in terms of, you know, where you want to go, your future goals. You're going to be thinking long term, especially financially and especially with career. And, you know, all of that is going to really come in on the seventh and for the rest of the month. Like, that's going to be the name of the game. You know, like, how can these investments or how can these business deals or how can my financial situation also contribute to my career or vice versa? Right. Like, so that's going to really be it for you from the seventh until the rest of the month. And then on the 10th, the sun is gonna join Uranus, which is gonna be a really exciting, liberating, freeing kind of energy happening in your eighth house as well of money, other people's resources, investments, business, etc. So this is gonna be like a very exciting, like illumination or enlightened period of you feeling like, holy shit, like I'm ready to finally fucking break free. Like this is where you could really start feeling amped up to make big moves. Again, you may not, if they're brand new moves that you hadn't already been thinking about or that you haven't done before, may not be the perfect time to do it, but it's still gonna be this energy of like, there's something kind of surprising, unconventional, innovative, like a lightning strikes moment that's like, whoa, like I get this now, or I know what I need to do now, or this is all making sense now, right? Like right around the 10th, you're gonna be feeling that. So that's gonna be really, really fucking cool. Um, on the 13th, Venus is going to be in Cancer and it's going to trine Saturn uh, in your sixth house. So this also looks like really positive connections and positive influences happening between your career and long-term goals versus your work and day-to-day -day routines and health. Um, and so you're really kind of really flowing there with that. Then on the 14th, Mercury is going to go direct. So it's going to start moving forward. So from the 14th onward is when you can start making moves, decisions, like, you know, final decisions and all of that. Things are going to really be kicking in high gear. You're going to be like, oh, I get it now. I get it. I know what I need to start doing. I got it. I need like it may not all happen right away, but 
from the 14th onward, you're going to keep getting more and more clear, right? At least. So then on the 16th, Jupiter is going to move into Taurus. And this is, this is a big deal. Okay. So listen the fuck up. So Jupiter is going to move into your eighth house. I just went through this last year. Okay. Jupiter is in my eighth house when it was in Pisces. And let me fucking tell you, <laughs> let me fucking tell you, um, it is a very abundant time right? And this is a time where you can really make a lot of profound change, do a lot of profound up leveling with your finances in a very short amount of time for the rest of this year, right? Um, so this is going to be the time where you really want to start making those big moves, those big changes. Like if there's been something that's been coming to you about like, I need to do this or I need to go, go here, learn about it, look into it, like if you feel it in your body, if it feels like a fuck yes, you know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to give you financial advice, but you know, you're gonna be learning how to trust your body and your instincts and your five senses a little more when it comes to money and abundance and pleasure as well, right? And so this can be a very transformative time in terms of abundance, pleasure, embodiment, um, getting into some maybe occult-like things, learning some occult-like things with those things as well, feminine energy, all of that. Uh, it's, it's yeah, just, it's, it's going to be a very abundant time that's going to bring in a lot of opportunity through other people's money, through business, through investments, through finances, shared finances and resources. Your partner could get a huge raise. They could start making more money if you're in a relationship. Um, you know, it, it's just going to be a really good time for that. So really positive, really beneficial. Take fucking advantage of it. Okay. Like just, just fucking do it. Do not, do not fucking, uh, like just, just listen. Okay. Just listen to me. Okay. So, um, then Jupiter is also going to square Pluto as it moves into, Taurus, which is your fifth house. So this could also cause a lot of transformation and change in terms of your sexuality, your dating life. Um, you know, like you, maybe you meet someone that's like super wealthy, right? And you start dating them like that. <laughs> Good for you, you know, like, or you start, you know, wanting to make that money yourself, which also fucking good for you, you know, like be that fucking independent badass. But, but somehow it could start bringing a very powerful change in terms of your sexuality, in terms of, you know, dating, in terms of children, in terms of what you love and where you find joy and pleasure in your life. Like this is, yeah, like, you know, manifestation, especially when it comes to abundance, could also be a big deal for you guys as a Libra rising around this time. Then on the 19th, we have the new moon in Taurus, which is like the new chapter. The new beginning is like that's where it's all kind of tying up to, all building up to this month is that new moon in Taurus on the 19th where it's like new chapter activated, started. Like, let's fucking go. Like, it's time to get abundant, baby. You know, like then on the 20th, we're going to have the, uh, we're going to have Mars moving into Leo, which is your 11th house of other people and networking, marketing, promotion, connecting with other people, all of that. Uh, so you're going to be really driven and focused there in some way. Uh, maybe like bringing some of your passions out into the world, maybe getting into selling or sales or business or whatever. Um, because of some of the other aspects that you have going on and like putting yourself out there or promoting or networking or marketing, whatever this is, you know, like, um, or finding like-minded individuals or people that know more about some of these things that you're getting into. So, um, Mars will oppose Pluto though on the fifth or not on the fifth, sorry, from the 20th to the 25th, I meant. Um, and in your fifth is what I meant, actually. I was like, why did I just say that? Sorry. Um, sometimes I get ahead of myself. But Mars will be opposing Pluto in your fifth at first, from the 20th to the 25th. But it's also going to square Jupiter. So I normally this will be really fucking intense, but I feel like some kind of higher you know, good shit is going to come out of it. Like it's really pushing you towards your potential. You could be feeling pulled in two directions. Like, you know, you're really going through this transformative process and what you love dating, you know, attraction, children, creation, things that you enjoy and shit like that. But you're also like, you know, being pulled to express it and share it with other people and like bring other people in on this, you know, and make it into maybe a business endeavor or something. Right. And so, yeah, something from the 20th to the 25th could be going on like that. But 
Then on the 21st, the sun moves into Gemini, which is how we basically end this. And um, the shift will start going from, you know, like there'll still be a focus on your finances and abundance and all of that, like I've been saying. But like then there will also be a shift that is you more focused on learning pursuits, education, mentorship, teaching, maybe travels learning more, learning endeavors, things like that. Um, so yeah, this month looks like you are getting a lot of really massive insight into something and then wanting to share it with others and wanting to like connect with others that relate or that, you know, are into it too. And then maybe like learning more about it or teaching other people or sharing it with other people in some way. And it really starts like delving into like a lot of creativity within your career and and all of that. So um, yeah, love this month for you, Libra. Looks fucking good. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening or coming up or taking place. I'd really love to hear your feedback as always. If you made it through this whole part, make sure to comment badass down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Scorpio, let's have a little chat, shall we? Welcome to your May 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So May for you, my darlings, <laughs> is a really big month because we have a lot happening in your opposite sign of Taurus, okay, which is your seventh house of relationships and other people. So relationship focus is going to be very, very huge in some way or another, right? Some way or another. Mercury is retrograding here as we start the month. So you kind of have been reflecting, revisiting, rethinking, remembering, realizing, you know, just really going back around to certain topics within your relationship, your partnership, other people in your life and, and how you relate or connect with those people and what they mean to you and if they align with you and all of these different things. And so you're like, where do you find quality, stability, security in these connections in your life? Where do you find do you find pleasure? Do you find, like, how can you simplify your relationships and find more steadiness, more peace, more ease, more pleasure, more, more presence in your relationships, right? And so that's going to be a, a really big focus for you as we're starting the month. And then on the second, the sun and Mercury are going to come into their conjunction. Mercury's retrograde. So this is going to really kind of show you you know, certain things about your relationships. This could be news, information, realizations that kind of comes in. That's like, you know, it starts clicking about maybe certain people in your life or your partnership or something, you know, there's some kind of realization or some kind of information or conversation even that is kind of brought to light um, right around the 2nd of May, right? And that's going to kind of show you what this Mercury retrograde is trying to show you, right? Um, it's going to give you a glimpse of what this retrograde is trying to show you here. So then on the 5th, we are going to have the Scorpio lunar eclipse happening in your sign. So this is going to be a really, really powerful event. You could start feeling it days before. Um, that is really, really leading up to you, Scorpio, being shown or revealed certain parts of yourself that either you have forgotten or not wanted to embrace or need to let go of that are no longer relevant, aligned, or who you are anymore, right? And so right around the 5th, you're going to get, you know, or in the days leading up to it, there's going to be a revealing that happens of something that's been kind of in the shadows for you to do with yourself, to do with, I mean, for some of you, it could also do with your relationships, but it could be like a kind of breaking free moment. Like if you want more peace, stability, ease, simplicity, consistency, pleasure, and enjoyment and fulfillment in your relationships, there are certain parts of you, you know, that can be holding you back. You know, where do you fear too much? Where do you worry too much? Where do you close yourself off too much? Where do you, you know, where are you too attached to old things, old defenses, you know, um, like it, they're being, they're needing to be this like chaos or intensity that you bring to the surface, you know, like where do you need to let go of some of that so you can find more peace and stability and ease in your life, right? Or where have you not been embracing certain parts of yourself or being authentic or real or, or revealing certain parts of yourself or being vulnerable where you need to, that could help some of the situations that you may be in right now. So that's something, those are some things that could come up for you in the first few days of the month. And then uh, on the 10th, the sun is going to come into its official conjunction to Uranus, 
could also start feeling this in the days before, but this is going to be a very freeing, liberating, you know, exhilarating kind of energy or something that is revealing or illuminated for you in terms of your relationships or in terms of your partner, because your seventh house can also represent the person that you're in a relationship with or the other people in your life. So it's like they could do something that's very like unconventional or, you know, exciting or exhilarating or kind of out of the box or something like that, right? So on the 14th, Mercury is going to go direct. So Mercury will no longer be retrograde. So from the 14th onward, you're going to start getting a lot of clarity. It's going to kind of start coming slowly and keep going for the rest of the month mainly, where you're going to start really realizing everything that needs to be known about this relationship or the people in your life or your relationship dynamics. Like things are going to start making a lot more sense as Mercury goes direct. Then on the 16th, we have the big dog transit of Jupiter moving into Taurus, your seventh house. So if things have been kind of turbulent or kind of extreme or kind of all over the place in terms of your relationship life, in terms of your love life, in terms of, you know, other people in your life and, you know, all of that, Jupiter here is going to help heal a lot of this, but it may require that you make some changes first, right? So it's going to expand all of this, right? So if you're, you know, in a partnership that, you know, is not exactly aligned with you, you may find someone that is more aligned with you. Um, if you're in a partnership that's kind of been up and down, some of you could finally find a resolve to that, right? So Jupiter moving into your seventh is going to be a time where your partnerships are amplified, where things evolve and grow in your partnerships and, and things become even more clear and abundant in your partnerships and you could notice that your partner starts going through a lot of evolutionary growth as well that they start you know progressing very quickly and feeling very abundant feeling very sure of themselves and you know things like that or learning new things or growing in new ways right so but jupiter will first square pluto as it moves into taurus and pluto is in your fourth house and so this could be a time that that goes like that brings up a lot of change in your home, family and personal life, but also with your partnerships or relationships with other people. And so this could definitely be a time where you're like, you know, making change for the better, making really deep and, and transformative, uh, transformative change in your home, family, personal, private life, but for the better, for the future of this relationship or um, the future of where you want to be in this relationship, right? So then on the 19th, we're going to have a new moon in Taurus. And that's what this whole month is kind of leading up to is this new moon in Taurus on the 19th. That's where everything's going to really culminate and come into this massive new chapter in your life in relationships still. <laughs> it's all about relationships for you this month. I'm sorry, I know. But um, I mean, we'll get to a couple things that aren't all the way, but most of it's about relationships. So this new moon is going to happen striking this new chapter, this new beginning that kind of starts in your relationship sector where things are calming down, things are, you know, becoming more and more clear. Um, and then on the 20th, uh, we're going to have Mars moving into Leo, which is your 10th house. So this is exciting and somewhat deals with your relationships, but not all the way. It will maybe impact or affect your relationships in some way, or your relationships will impact this in some way. But uh, for the most part, this is a really exciting shift, you know, where you're going to feel very ambitious <laughs> with Mars and Leo in your 10th. You're going to be feeling very ambitious when it comes to your goals, when it comes to your future, when it comes to your career. So it looks like whatever is happening in your relationships and home life and behind the scenes is starting to really like drive you. It's giving you this like sense of, of drive where you're feeling very driven. You're feeling very ambitious. You're feeling very like, you know, and so you may start going, you know, you may start feeling like in extreme ways, like this sense of drive and ambition um, to really go after what it is that you want in your life, to really go after the, your goals, your long-term goals, your career, your future, you know, the things that you want to achieve, success, you know, notoriety or recognition in some way as well. Um, so, but it, it's really kind of leading you to more potential in your life. It's kind of showing you like, look, you have more potential here. Where have you been, you know, playing it small or whatever, right? Like that's what all these things are kind of showing you. I feel like that's leading up to this. It's like, hey, you have more potential or you can do better or you deserve more or whatever, right? Like there's this desire for more that begins to come in. And I feel like this is 
kind of leading up to that and you're like you know what i'm gonna be the go-getter i'm gonna go get it i'm gonna go i'm gonna like just i'm just just watch right like that's kind of the energy that's coming in here for you scorpio so uh then on the 21st the sun is going to uh, move into Gemini, and so Gemini season is going to start. And so there will be a slight shift in focus towards your uh, finances, your shared finances and resources, um, investing, business, things like that. So that will be something that starts as Gemini season uh, starts. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. Let me know down below if this resonated. I really, really love to hear what you guys are noticing for the month ahead and if any of this feels like it's going to happen for you. Comment the word badass down below if you watch this whole part of the video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Sagittarius darling, welcome to your May 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing fabulous. So May is such an exciting month. This month for you is really about finding that ease, that flow, that quality, that pleasure, that value in your work again and in your health in your day-to-day -day life and routines right like being more present in these areas and really dedicating yourself to things that feel good and that really activate you and that bring you more fulfillment enjoyment pleasure ease you know being more present whether with your health your work you know and how to bring more quality and value back into that instead of just maybe hurrying up and getting things done or whatever and so you're really trying to figure out how to bring in more consistency and ease and and beauty even maybe and and pleasure into your work and health life and so that is what this month is really going to be about for you as you will see so um we start off with mercury being retrograde so mercury went retrograde towards the end of april and this is you know a retrograde that's really kind of going into a lot of those things i just said like you're really reflecting on you know your work health and day-to-day -day routine where do you, where can you simplify things where can you bring more quality into what you're doing rather than so much quantity right where can you find more pleasure and be more present in those things like so this is going to really ask you to slow down like stop and smell the fucking roses you know like quit trying to freaking go 100 on the damn highway and you're gonna find your answers by really slowing down you know leaning into pleasure leaning into you know your five senses leaning into creativity leaning into ease right like stopping and taking a deep breath and you know from there things become clear and so how can you simplify uh instead of being so chaotic and <clears throat> whatever right so that's going to be what this month is really about what this mercury retrograde is really about as well and then on the second the sun and mercury will come into their kazemi so this is going to be where you're starting to have these revelations if you're not already but where you get kind of like another glimpse another piece of the puzzle that's like oh this is what i need to do or this is what i need to implement or being reminded of something in your day-to-day -day work and health life <clears throat> which can really help you start figuring it out logically and mentally and and all of that on the fifth we're going to have the scorpio lunar eclipse so you could start feeling this a few days before the fifth it may not be right on the fifth but just building up to the fifth there is going to be this intensity coming in, in with this lunar eclipse in scorpio that is in your 12th house of you know things that are hidden shit that's hidden old patterns old habits old cycles old old fucking subconscious shit right like that you've been working on clearing out on and off for like since like the end of january right and so you're really kind of learning like what skeletons you got in the closet right like what old patterns what old habits what old behaviors like what old dark ass shit that is weighing you down that needs to go that is affecting your maybe physical health your physical day-to-day -day reality your physical day-to-day -day work your physical day-to-day -day life and like by letting these things go you go through this purge or you go through this detox and then then things become more pleasurable things fill up with more ease things go in a more stable simple sustainable way right and so um that's another good taurus word sustainable i've been forgetting <laughs> just keep saying the same words because it's taurus so like and i keep i have to say this like 12 times but in 12 different areas of life so anyway but um yeah so that scorpio lunar eclipse on the fifth is coming in and be like what old shit needs to be let go of what old shit needs to clear out it's gonna like really reveal something to you that's like 
oh, I still have this like subconscious fear or this subconscious habit or this subconscious issue, um, this fucking programming that is toxic and messy and chaotic and whatever. It's like showing you where things are chaotic behind the scenes and where those chaotic behind the scenes things are affecting your day to day life and your health and work and all of that. And so it's like this lunar eclipse is like letting that the fuck go so you can move forward, right? Whether it's a habit or a fear or a pattern or whatever, right? So then uh, on the 10th, the sun and Uranus are going to come into their conjunction in Taurus. So this is going to be a very liberating and freeing energy right after that lunar eclipse. So that really tells me we're going to be feeling like electrified and eccentric and, you know, excited and maybe like in this like energy of like realizing things, seeing things and feeling very liberated and free and like, you know, just like breaking free of old habits and patterns, like breaking out of our mold, you know? And so uh, I really feel like you're going to be, you know, kind of feeling that related to patterns, work and, and health and all of that. And then uh, on the 14th, Mercury is going to go direct. So it's no longer going to be retrograde. So from the 14th until basically the rest of the month, you're going to be really starting to make sense of what you've learned the last few weeks before the 14th, right? With Mercury retrograde from like the end of April and, you know, into May until the 14th. Like, and then you're going to be able to start implementing these new ideas and new realizations and all of that as they keep coming. And then on the 16th is where the big dog transit happens of Jupiter finally moving into Taurus. <laughs> and this is so freaking exciting. I cannot wait. So Jupiter is going to move into your sixth. And this is going to be a time of expansion and amplification of abundance and beauty and ease and, and stability and pleasure and embodiment in your work and health life. And so this is going to bring a lot of opportunity, a lot of insight, a lot of learning, a lot of growth, a lot of pro progress in this area, right? So you're gonna be experiencing a lot of abundance in work, a lot of abundance in health. You know, um, this could definitely be a time where you are focused on more abundance in your work life, or you are focused on more embodiment and pleasure in your health in some way, right? And so uh, you're really gonna be just feeling that amplification and expansion of this energy as you bring more ease, you know, flow and presence and, you know, quality into your health and work life. And so, but when Jupiter moves into Taurus on the 16th, it is going to square Pluto in your third house. So this could bring up a massive change or transformation or shift that needs to happen in terms of, that's going to be for the better in terms of your environment, in terms of the people, places, and things that you visit on a day-to-day -day basis. So a way I could see this happening is like, you're like, you know what? I would have start getting healthier, eating more quality foods, keeping it simple. Um, you know, and then you're like, well, I live right next door to a fucking, I don't know, McDonald's or something, right? Like, and so you're like, I have to stop going to these places if I want to have a healthier life, right? Like, so something like that, um, it could be a bigger change than that for some of you though, but it's just kind of an example. It's like certain environments or places around you, uh, situations, people, places, things, environments, cities, neighborhoods, etc., around you that may need to change for you to implement these positive, you know, things in your life or this abundance of new things in your life. And so then on the 19th, we're going to have the official new chapter, the new moon in Taurus, which is really like the, the, the new chapter starting, right? And so that's where like there's this new chapter starting in your work, health, and day-to-day -day routine and bringing more value, like all the lessons you've been learning up until this point are really going to kind of be coming into play here so you can implement them. And then on the 20th, Mars is going to move into the sign of Leo. So Mars is going to move into your ninth house of higher education, higher learning, belief systems, foreign travel, you know, legalities at times, um, things like that. So this could be a time where you start really getting, you start like putting a lot of your energy into like maybe wanting to travel or maybe wanting to express yourself more uh, in terms of, or find who you are more in terms of traveling, or maybe wanting to really dive into educational pursuits or um, learning pursuits, mentorship, you know, teaching, things like that. And so that could get really, really big for you from the 20th uh, onward. And then when Mars goes into Leo, though, it is going to oppose Pluto in your third. So again, this looks like a major change in your environment or surroundings 
uh, for some of you, you could be traveling or you could be thinking about moving far away or moving cities or towns um, or just getting out of like getting out of being around certain people and environments that are no longer aligned with who you are and what you desire and want to do for yourself. It's like this is where you really kind of start taking action on that, you know. So then on the 21st, the sun's going to move into Gemini and Gemini season starts, which is your seventh house. So there will be a slight shift from the 21st onward and into June uh, on your relationships with other people, your partnerships, your connections with other people, um, your partner, if you're already in a relationship. And so, um, yeah, and that is basically it for May. <laughs> Let me know down below, Sagittarius, if you could see a lot of these things happening. If you feel like this is going to relate, make sure to come back and let me know throughout the month if this does end up relating. I'd love, love, love to hear your feedback as always. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Alrighty, Capricorn Risings. <laughs> Welcome to your May 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. All right, Capricorn, look. All you gotta fucking do this month to really get in there and really enjoy May is to just fucking enjoy it. Like, that is all you have to do, okay? Like, you just need to slow the fuck down and really remember what gives you a sense of joy, what gives you a sense of pleasure, right? Like, what lights you up? Like, what feels good in your body? Like, what activates your five senses, taste, smell, touch, sight, hearing, you know? Like, what really activates you right what gives you a sense of fulfillment and like really embody that this month right like you're gonna be feeling really abundant if you can slow down get present be in tune with the things that feel good to you right and be in tune with fun and create creativity right like that's all you have to do just slow down and fucking enjoy this month because that is what this month is all about for you so we start off the month with mercury being retrograde it went retrograde towards the end of april in your fifth house of love romance dating sexuality fun pleasure enjoyment all these things i've been talking about right so you've been kind of reflecting on these things you know like how can you bring more value how can you get more out of your how can you get more quality out of your time how can you get how can you get more pleasure out of your life how can you enjoy life more and have fun more and and feel like in this vibe of like pleasure and love and enjoyment and creativity and all of that right and so that is what you've been really reflecting on with mercury retrograde and it's going to really kind of show you how to slow down and lean back into that right like lean in to the pleasure and like lean out of the fucking chaos of other people and life and all of that like just just fucking do it okay like that's what this month is all about so on the second though of may the sun and Mercury will come into their Kazemi, and so this is happening in your fifth house as well. So this is where you're going to kind of start realizing some of this. You know, you may have already started realizing some of this, but you're going to realize some more of this around the second, and it's going to be like, whoa, yeah, like, I remember when I used to love to do this, or I remember how this used to make me feel, or I remember a time where I was, like, really into this, or, like, you know, maybe getting back in touch with a hobby or an old passion or something like that like it's just a time of really slowing down it's very sensual energy and so lean into that right so then on the fifth we're gonna have the scorpio lunar eclipse and you could start feeling this on the days leading up to it but this is revealing something to do with your 11th house so your connections networking other people groups of people like-minded people and certain maybe like chaotic or you know fucking intense emotional like just drama to do with this area of your life and so this is like a time that's revealing maybe certain connections or groups that you're a part of or people in your life or things that you're doing or people that you're interacting with every day that are just chaotic you know that are just chaotic that are complex that are you know maybe bringing in some toxicity into your life in some way and it's like this lunar eclipse is coming in for you to let some of this shit go and reveal some of this shit to you so you can let it go so you can move on so you can find more peace and ease and presence and flow into your life instead of worrying about what everybody else wants or is doing or expects from you or having these like maybe even toxic attachments to certain connections in your life that are really not bringing you any value or reward at the end of the day. Like you can do that all by your bad fucking self, right? And so that I think is what this lunar eclipse just in a nutshell is going to kind of bring up for you. And then uh, on the 7th, Venus is going to move into your 7th house of Cancer. So 
not only do you have this massive fifth house connection, but you're also going to have this seventh house connection of Venus, which rules your fifth house, moving into your seventh house, which tells me that your love life and your relationship life is going to be on and popping this month, especially after the seventh. I mean, it may even be before the seventh, but really there's going to be this connection between finding more love, uh, presence, enjoyment, quality time, and you know, quality experiences with the people in your life, with your relationship, with your significant other, with whoever that you're close to or have deep committed bonds with in your life, right? And so there's really going to be a focus on that. Um, for a lot of you guys that are single, while Mercury is still retrograde, this could be an old lover or an old love affair that kind of comes back into the picture or hits you up randomly. After Mercury goes um, direct, though, on the 14th and onward, this could even be a new romance that comes in for some of you or someone new that you guys kind of have your eye on. Or, you know, if you're already in a partnership, then this could just be reflecting on what you really value about that partnership, reflecting on, you know, your sex life and that partnership and where you're feeling pleasure or not in that connection, um, where you can bring more value and, and quality to that connection, more pleasure, more fulfillment into that and really grow and evolve that so but yeah venus in your seventh is going to be a really great time for your relationships and finding harmony and peace and balance and connection and and deep emotional connection in your relationships so then on the 10th the sun is going to join uranus in your fifth house of uh like i've been saying fun dating romance etc etc um so this is going to be a time where you are feeling very like just liberated like you know kind of lightning strike moment where it's like freedom liberation innovative ideas unconventionality in some way right like so this could be a time where you're feeling really lit up really excited about something that you're doing or a passion that you have or have an idea for something new are just feeling very like electrified by the energy and and things that are happening in some way and so on the 14th like i said mercury is going to go direct so from the 14th until basically the rest of the month you're going to really start like you know integrating those lessons you've learned in the weeks just the weeks that were leading up to the 14th um where mercury was retrograde so when mercury goes direct you're going to start making sense of things things are going to really start coming in from the 14th onward to start implementing the lessons that you learned so then on the 16th, we have the big dog transit of Jupiter moving into Mother Effing Taurus. And this is so freaking beautiful. So excited for this. And this is so amazing for you, Capricorn, because this is your fifth house of where you find joy and fun and pleasure and entertainment like your heart's desires, but also dating, romance, sexuality, fertility, children, things like that. So this is going to be a very abundant time for you in those areas where you're going to be growing and expanding and learning a lot more and seeing new perspectives on this area of life and really stabilizing this area of life and getting very solid and clear and consistent about your creative foundation and pleasure and like bringing more of that into your life. And so I'm really, really looking forward to this transit and it's very good for you. So, uh, but when Jupiter first moves in around the 16th, it is going to square Pluto in your second. So this could mean making some positive changes or changes that eventually are going to lead to, um, more fun, pleasure, value, creativity in your life especially with your finances. Like, so it could mean making some big changes with your finances, your income, your financial situation. You know, maybe you start deciding, you know, like I want more or I deserve more or I'm worth more, you know? And so I'm going to like get something that is gonna bring me a lot of pleasure or do something that's gonna bring me a lot of pleasure, buy something that's gonna bring me a lot more passion and enjoyment or maybe something that you're really passionate about you realize can start like becoming a new income stream for you in some way, right? And so, and you get really creative with that. So that could be something that starts happening, you know, from the 16th until, um, you know, for like a week or two after. And then on the 19th, the new moon in Taurus is gonna happen. And everything this month is really building up to this new moon where there's this new beginning, this new chapter starting with Taurus. Like Jupiter's in there. We just had a Mercury retrograde where we went back and reflected. Like we've cleared out everything that needs to be cleared out. And this is where the new chapter starts. So there's a new chapter starting here with love, money, or not really money. I mean, it could be money for some of you, but love, uh, dating, romance, sexuality, pleasure, your heart's desires, passions, hobbies, things like that. So um, that new beginning is going to feel very abundant and like there's just this new energy coming in and it's coming kind of full circle. So 
On the 20th, Mars is going to move into the sign of Leo, which is your eighth house. So there is going to be a focus, a, a strong focus that starts forming on your finances, income, investments, business. If you have your own business, shared finances, shared re resources, things like that. And so there's going to be a strong drive there that starts coming in where you're going to really start wanting to like manage shit, be on top of shit and take action on things and focus on things. But Mars will oppose Pluto when it first moves in for those first couple of days um, after the 20th and, uh, and Pluto's in your second and Aquarius again, and they're both going to be squaring Jupiter in your fifth. And so you could be going through something where you're kind of reevaluating and realizing like you can do so much more than maybe you've been doing. You can create so much more. You have this like massive creative capacity right now with Jupiter in your fifth. And you're like, you know what? Like, I can create big fucking things with this, right? And so there could be this kind of really intense, extreme kind of, you know, energy coming in where it's like, oh my God, like I could be doing this or I could be doing that. Like you can just see your potential so much more and it's driving you, right? And you're like, I need to create more. Or I know what I want to create next or whatever the case may be. And so there's this intense focus between like, you know, your own income and your own assets and your own priorities and your own resources versus shared resources, finances, business, et cetera, with other people, right? So that could be a focus from like the 20th to the 25th. Definitely watch out for that and let me know how it goes, okay? Come back and let me know because I'm curious about that one. But on the 21st, Gemini season starts, the sun moves into Gemini. So there will be a shift in focus. Um, I mean, you'll still be focused on other things that I've already named off, but there will also then be a focus uh, on your work. <laughs> and that definitely makes sense with all of this like passion, business, finance stuff happening. Um, you know, there are big things that I think you're wanting and wanting to go after and you're realizing like, I want more, I deserve more, I'm worthy of more, like I value more, all of that. And then the sun moves into Gemini on the 21st. And then from there, I feel like there's just like, okay, like I need to start getting strategic with my work and with, you know, my day-to-day -day routines and all of that. And so that is what I'm seeing for you this month, Capricorn. Let me know down below if any of that seems like it's going to resonate for you. Comment the word badass if you watched your horoscope all the way through. I appreciate you. Definitely come back and check in with me if, you know, any of these things happen or throughout the month. If you want to rewatch this, come back and rewatch it and let me know what all is resonating, what all happened. I really want to know. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Aquarius rising. So May for you is really about kind of letting go of old, toxic, chaotic, you know, emotionally turbulent and lack-based energies and situations in terms of career and in terms of goals and future and things like that. And really finding this more secure, comfortable, consistent, sustainable, uh, abundant and, you know, place of ease inside of you and, and in your foundation of life and within your home life, within your personal life, like creating a solid foundation within your personal life and knowing like that you're good and you're taken care of. And, you know, there's like this quality, there's like this, this, you know, just an innate sense of ease there and abundance there where you don't have to get caught up in, all the different chaos of life or work or career or future or the world or whatever. And you can kind of really just relax within yourself and, and really have this strong and consistent sense, this stable sense of foundation, right? And so that is what this month is really about for you. It's gonna bring up a lot in terms of your home life, your personal life, and uh, you know, creating your own solid sense of foundation that you can come back to time and time again, no matter what's going on in your life, right? And so that's what I really see here for you this month. It's a beautiful month. Let's get into it. So we start off this month with Mercury retrograding in your fourth house of Taurus. Sorry, it feels like I have like a hair somewhere on my face and it's driving me nuts, but <laughs> it feels like, or it doesn't feel like, I don't even know what I'm saying now, but we start off this month with Mercury retrograding in your fourth house of Taurus. And so this is a time where you are reflecting, going back to, revisiting, remembering, maybe different things from the past and um, different things to do with your home life, different things to do with security, different things to do with family, different things to do with maybe material possessions, money, um, different things to do with solidity within your foundation, your home, your family, right? And so you're really reflecting on that, learning different things about that, re-realizing different things about that, remembering different things. It could be a very nostalgic time as well. 
And then on the second, the sun and Mercury are going to come into their conjunction uh, in your fourth house of home, family, your personal life, your private life. So this is going to be a revelation of sorts. This is going to be like an epiphany or an aha moment coming in where you're really like, oh, like I just remember this or oh, I just see this or there's some kind of news or some kind of piece of the puzzle that begins to fit in here, you know? And so that's really coming in around the second. And then on the fifth, we're going to have the Scorpio lunar eclipse happening. And this is going to be kind of like an energy of uh, really, again, like revealing to you what is really chaotic or what is really intense or what you're emotionally attached to or what fears you have in terms of life and the future and career and long-term goals and success and, you know, putting yourself out there and, you know, your place in the world and the legacy you want to leave behind, things like that, right? And so it could be revealing something to you in this area that maybe it needs to be let go of, or maybe you need to like break the chains on, right? Because it's been stunting you or holding you back or keeping you from finding an internal sense of peace within yourself and within your personal life. Um, but it could also be kind of like revealing something about you or your career or where you're going or what you want to do in your life um, that also fuels you. So that could be the other, other part of it. It could be kind of almost like an integration or it could be like a letting go. So uh, just kind of keep a lookout for that around the fifth and the first few days of the month leading up to the fifth. So then uh, on the seventh, Venus is going to move into your sixth house, which is going to be really good for creating connections in terms of work and in terms of your job, in terms of coworkers, in terms of health and relating to other people and having a little bit more beneficial energy coming into that area of life. And then on the 10th, we're going to have the sun and Uranus coming into their conjunction in your fourth house. So this is going to be a very like liberating, eccentric, electric kind of energy um, that is also going to be kind of illuminating something to you about something that you are really feeling or breaking free from or embracing, embodying in terms of this like internal personal, private foundation that we've been going over, or in terms of your family, in terms of your home life, you know, something like that. So then on the 14th, Mercury is going to go direct and be done retrograding. So from the 14th until basically the rest of the month, you're going to be really making sense of like the weeks prior. And then on the 16th is where the big dog transit happens. This is where Jupiter moves into mother effing Taurus. Okay. And so this is so, so, so exciting. Um, Jupiter is moving into your fourth house, which means there's going to be an expansion, a growth, an abundance of something that really starts coming in to your fourth house, to your foundation, to your, you know, sense of family, home, personal life, like all of these things I've been naming off, like Jupiter is going to, going to bring a lot of really beneficial energy here and really grow this area of your life in some way. So a lot of you that are Aquarius risings could decide, I want a bigger house, or I want to add on to my house, or I want to renovate my house, or like I want to move, or I want to, you know, like, or just start feeling a lot more internally and foundationally aligned within yourself and at ease within yourself. Um, this could be a time where, you know, you start taking up an interest in homes or real estate or something along those lines. Um, but either way, it's going to be a really positive, uh, for the most part, like abundant experience or growth oriented experience in terms of home, family, personal life, your foundation, um, things like that. So then on the 19th, we are going to have the new moon in Taurus, which is also kind of you know, everything before the new moon in Taurus on the 19th is like leading up to this new moon in Taurus. So this is where like the new chapter like starts a couple days after Jupiter enters Taurus. It's kind of like, oh, OK, like this is where the new chapter starts. Right. Um, I do want to back up because I skipped something. So when Jupiter moves into Taurus on the 16th, it's going to square Pluto in your sign, which could create a really powerful change or transformation within yourself, Aquarius, within who you are how you view yourself, your identity, your body, things like that. So um, Jupiter moving into your fourth, it could be like there is some kind of growth or abundant factor that's coming into your home, family, and personal life, but it's also creating a, a massive shift or change within yourself, right? And so, and I do believe that it's for the better, um, whatever it is. So 
Then on the 20th, we're going to have Mars moving into Leo, which is your seventh house. And so there's definitely going to be a massive drive or a lot of energy being focused towards the relationships in your life or other people in your life or your partner in your life if you're in a relationship. Now, um, this can also create, because Mars is going to be here, you know, Mars takes a little while to go through a sign, so it's going to be here for the rest of May and also June. But Mars in your seventh house could also create kind of you know, some confrontation or some arguments, you know, it's not going to always be that way the whole time it's there. It's also going to create just a lot of energy and a lot of, you know, um, uh, focus and, and a lot of drive in terms of relationships and connections with other people. But you can find a lot of other people in your life or a lot of other people that you're running into are just seeming very confrontational at times or a little bit more like, edgy or whatever than usual. So you do want to watch out for that. If you're in a relationship, your partner could be feeling a lot more motivated and things like that. Or other people could be embracing qualities that you need to um, integrate yourself, right? So think about it like that as well. Now, Mars will also be opposing Pluto when it moves into Leo in your seventh house and Pluto's in your sign. So this could definitely create also some change within you and your dynamic with other people as you're kind of also navigating this growth and this new potential and opportunity in your home, family, and personal life. And so uh, that could be something that comes up from the 20th to the 25th. So just be aware of that. Then on the 21st, the sun is going to move into Gemini. So Gemini season will begin and there will be also a focus that begins to come in when that happens on your love life and on what brings you a sense of enjoyment and pleasure and fun in life and maybe children as well. Now this is going to be interesting because the sun rules Leo where Mars is at, your seventh. So you're going to kind of have your fifth and your seventh house being activated. So love life is going to get really, you know, probably be a, a little bit more of a prominent focus towards the end of the month and moving into June as well. So just be prepared for that. If you're not in a relationship, this could be definitely a time where you start meeting someone or there's a lot of chemistry or friction there between you and someone. So just be kind of aware of that you could run into a lot of a lot more courageous and dominant and bold and confident people that could really inspire you to start embracing those aspects of yourself as well. And you may feel a little threatened by them at first or a little triggered by them at first. But if that is the case, you know, especially towards the end of the month from like the 20th, you know, onward, then just remember, like, what are they showing me within me if you're triggered, right? Like, what you know, do I need to start embracing within me, right? So just remember that because the seventh house is a mirror. So I love you, Aquarius. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things playing out. Comment the word badass if you made it this far and watched all of this. And uh, don't, don't be afraid to come back and let me know how all this works out because I would love to know. I'd love to hear the tea. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Pisces rising, welcome to your May 2023 horoscope. So the month ahead for you is interesting. Uh, we have a lot of Taurus activations happening and that is your third house with a lot of random different shit basically. Your surroundings, your environment, you know, your self-expression, how you express yourself, maybe creating or learning different things. You could also deal with cousins, neighbors, relatives as well, siblings, you know, people, places, and things that you frequent or hang out with on a day-to-day -day basis or hang around on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe some close friends, day-to-day -day tasks and activities, things like that. It's kind of a weird house, short travels as well. Um, so that is kind of like a lot of, you know, some of the themes that you could be noticing in the month of May or reflecting on and revisiting or dealing with in the month of May, you're really being called to kind of be more present in the moment and in your actual day-to-day -day reality and in your actual day-to-day -day environment. So like, you know, if you've been kind of lost in a lot of the chaos that's going on in the world or social media or other people or whatever, like you're being called to be more present in each moment and find the enjoyment and pleasure and abundance and bliss in each moment and in your present actual moment, like be here now kind of energy, right? Like fucking Ram Dass, badass mother effort, man. Like freaking, he's my spirit animal. I love him so much. But anyway, so <laughs> we start off with Mercury being retrograde in your third house, which is really kind of showing you this. Like what have you, what are you, what are you revisiting right now in your life, in your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day surroundings and environment that is holding your focus, right? That needs your focus right now. That's kind of this Mercury retrograde. How can you be more present? How can you bring more ease into your life and into your lifestyle and into your day-to-day -day 
life and task and interactions and situations. Um, you may also be like really revisiting certain places that you used to love to go to. Like maybe there is a scenic, you know, park or something you used to love to go to, but you hadn't in a while. And so, you know, you're exploring that, you know, you're exploring more places around you and finding the value in what's around you, finding the quality in what's going on around you at the, at each moment, instead of escaping into something else where you know, being on the internet all the time or whatever. Like, it's like right here, right now, what the fuck's happening, right? Like, that's kind of this this third house energy. And so on the second, though, the sun and Mercury are going to come into their Kazemi. Um, so this is going to be like a moment of revelations, maybe some news, maybe some insight, maybe a realization, maybe a conversation that happens, some information that comes in right around the second that really like exposes something or shines a light on something and you're like oh okay like something clicks you know um and then right around the fifth we're gonna have a lunar eclipse in scorpio now this is your ninth house of your belief systems travel higher learning uh things like this and so <clears throat> world views things that are going on outside of where you're at and so this is kind of revealing to you where you have certain attachments <clears throat> or certain you know, repressed emotions, things like this, uh, or chaotic belief systems or worldviews or whatever, um, where you could be kind of attached to, to things that are going on outside of where you're at right now, basically, right? And so this could be a time of kind of shedding some of those things and realizing how some of them are really keeping you out of the here and now and how to just come back to the here and now, right? So then on the seventh, uh, Venus is gonna enter Cancer, which is your fifth house. It's gonna be a beautiful energy where not only are you focused on the here and now and what's going on around you and your environment and the places around you and the people around you and really be just being caught up more in the moment, but like Venus in your fifth is also really great for passion and having fun and creating, creating different things, right? So this could be a time where you're creating a lot of different things or you're diving into things that you enjoy, that you're passionate about. Venus in the fifth can be really great for dating and romance and sexuality too. Like you could be going on dates more. You could be exploring the places around you more, like getting to know the people around you more, you know, like things like this. And that's going to be there for like the rest of the month. So um, and then on the 10th, we're going to have the sun joining Uranus. So this is going to be like a very electrifying and illuminating energy that kind of comes in uh, in your third house. So this could be like a new innovative idea or a new inspiration that comes in or something random or exciting or unconventional or surprising that happens right around the 10th. So watch out for that. On the 14th, Mercury is going to go direct and be done retrograding. So from the 14th, basically, till the rest of the month, you're going to really start making sense of everything that happened in the weeks before when Mercury was retrograding. Uh, and then on the 16th is when the big dog transit happens this month of Jupiter moving into Taurus. And so this is going to be a time where you're really expanding your reach in terms of your environment, your community, your wherever you live, you know, like your, your surroundings and the people, places and things that you're around and the things that you're exploring on a day to day basis. Again, like being here now, you could start learning new things. You could start like creating new things, like diving into learning endeavors, learning new skills, you know, or, or expanding on your current skills that you already have. Right. Uh, this is going to be a really beautiful and abundant time for really honing on in on what you have, where you're at what's going on around you, your environment, and like expanding on those things, right? So then uh, Jupiter will square Pluto in your 12th house, though, when it moves into Taurus on the 16th. So this could create some intense but positive changes and transformations in terms of uh, your subconscious, like old subconscious programming or maybe uh, old habits or something like that, you know, letting go of old habits or something. Then on the 19th, we have a new moon happening in Taurus, and this is kind of like the new chapter, the new beginning stage of the month. Like everything's kind of building up to this new moon on the 19th. So this is going to be like when the new chapter, the new beginning starts, the new abundant beginning, the new um, pleasurable beginning that's full of more ease and, you know, more like stability or consistency or whatever. Right. And so this could definitely be a time that like new things are, are coming in, new beginnings are happening for you. So on the 20th, Mars is going to move into Leo and this is your sixth house. And so this is going to be a time 
where there's a lot of lot more energy and drive being focused towards work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. So, you know, you're expanding, you're learning, you're expanding your skill set, but you're also going to start really from like the 20th onward being really focused on your job, your work, your day-to-day -day routines, your health, and like really expressing yourself in these areas too and feeling very driven and confident and more creative um, as well. And so, but Mars is going to oppose Pluto when it first moves in. So this may be like you needing to change or get rid of or um, you know, purge some like bad habits, you know, um, or subconscious programming or deal with some power struggles where it's like, you know, you really want to start stepping into your confidence and your abilities and your potential in terms of work and health and all of that. But there may be some old subconscious fears that you're working through, um, that you begin to work through maybe through your environment and through being more present and through, um, really focusing on what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and the people, places, and things you're interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis in some way, being more present and, you know, being more into ease, maybe getting out into nature or something as well, like something like that. Um, or you find a place around you that somehow is helping with this, you know. So it's going to be interesting, 20th to 25th, that's going to be happening, so watch out for that. And then on the 21st, the sun is going to move into Gemini and Gemini season will begin. And this is your fourth house. So from the 21st um, into June, uh, you will also start focusing on, you know, home, family, your internal world, your internal life and um, your personal life, you know, you'll start seeing themes coming up with that. And so, yeah, that is what I'm seeing for you, Pisces. Let me know down below if a lot of this sounds like you could see this happening. I would really love to hear your feedback. Make sure to come back and let me know if you need to rewatch this. You're free to do that throughout the month. I'd really love to keep up with you and let me know, like, and just know what's going on, you know, like if any of this is ringing true or what does happen, I'd really love to know. Thank you for watching. Comment badass down below if you watched the whole horoscope and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Aries, last but certainly not least, welcome to your May 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So let's get into it. May for you is a lot about finding the quality in your life again, finding the things that are valuable to you again, the things that are priorities to you again, like simplifying your life, right? Leaning back into uh, pleasure, leaning back into slowing down, finding more ease and, and, and valuing the simple things in life again, right? Now, it can also bring up topics of money and resources and income and things like that, but like it's also about the simple values, the simple things that you find quality in, that you find pleasure in, that you find fulfillment in. And so remember that as well. But we start off the month with Mercury already being retrograde. It retrograded towards the end of April and it's in your second house. So you're revisiting, rethinking, reflecting on a lot of these things to do with, again, money, resources, your values, what you find quality in, right? Like what means something to you, what really uh, brings you a sense of joy and fulfillment, assets, things like that. So that is kind of already happening as we start the month. But then on the 2nd of May, the sun and Mercury are coming together. And so this is going to be like an epiphany or information or a realization that comes in about these things as well, like about quality and about, you know, uh, fulfillment and abundance and income and money and resources and assets and your priorities and, you know, where you find that sense of value in your life, you know. So watch out for that the couple first couple days of the month because there's some kind of insight coming in for you there. So then on the 5th, we are going to have the Scorpio lunar eclipse, the final one. And so this is going to be a massive point, a massive time of really shedding anything else that we need to fucking shed. <laughs> and this is happening in your 8th house of other people's resources, shared resources, uh, taxes, debt, um, lack, you know, uh, basically, you know, investing business, anything to do with like shared money and resources and energy with other people that really needs to be let go of or places of scarcity and lack and things like that in your life, power struggles, attachments, things like that, emotional attachments or chaotic situations to do with those things, you know, or complex situations to do with those things that are just not bringing you a sense of value or peace in your life, right? It's like revealing something to you that's like, 
why am I still doing this? Or why am I still attached to this? Or why am I still in this deal? Or why am I still like sharing this with this person? Like it's not bringing me peace. It's not bringing me value. It's not bringing quality to my life. So why am I doing it? Right. And so that is kind of this lunar eclipse. It's like revealing something to you that you may still need to let go of or shed or sometimes even integrate. Right. So um, watch out for that the first few days of the month leading up to the fifth. And then uh, we're also going to have Venus moving into Cancer on the 7th, and Venus rules your second house of Taurus. So, you know, from the 7th onward, a lot of this quality, value, money, assets, conversation, and, and these themes that are coming up are also going to then, from the 2nd onward, be a little bit related in some way, potentially, to your home, family, personal, private life sector in some way, right? And so um, there could definitely be something there where you're, like, wanting to bring more value and more... Um, quality and more security into uh, your home and family as well in some way or vice versa, right? So then on the 10th, we're going to have the sun joining Uranus in your second house of money, income, resources, value, quality, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <laughs> and basically, this is going to be a very electrifying and activating and kind of maybe spontaneous or random or uh, surprising or out of the box kind of um like illumination that comes in for you, right? Where it's like, oh my gosh, I have this brilliant idea where I've, I've, real, I've, I've realized this or I found a solution to this or whatever, right? And so watch out for that on the 10th. And then on the 14th, um, Mercury is going to finally start moving forward. It's going to be direct. So from the 14th onward, you're going to be getting more and more clear, more and more epiphanies on like, you know, your second house, right? Your your income, your money, resources, assets, value, quality, all of that. So then on the 16th, we have the big dog transit happening. So Jupiter is going to move out of your sign, <laughs> sorry, um, and into Taurus, right? So Jupiter is going to move into your second house. And so this is still really good, actually. It's going to start bringing a lot of growth, expansion, and abundance to your income, your assets, your resources, your money, right? What you own, right? And your quality of life, right? Your, where you find quality and value in your life and your priorities, right? And so this is going to be a massive focus for you for the rest of the year where you can really grow and evolve and expand and progress and up level your income and your financial situation and your assets and what you own and, and all of that, right? So this is going to be really, really big for you, Aries. Um, this is a very abundant time for you if you, if you use it, right? So um, when it first moves in though, it's going to square Pluto in your 11th house. So this could also, you know, Jupiter moving in could bring some kind of, you know, big change or transformation um, or extreme change on some levels to your network, right? Your connections, your, the people that you're involved with or that you connect with in some way. Um, different networks you're a part of, different groups you're a part of, or it could deal with networking in something. Like something could come up to deal with networking, marketing, promoting, something like that as well. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's for this growth. It's for this ben beneficial growth in terms of income, assets, resources, value, all of that. So then on the 19th, all of this is kind of coming to a head when we have this Taurus new moon in your second. So this is where the new beginning, the new chapter, um, the new, more stable, consistent chapter in your life starts when it comes to finances, income, assets, priorities, all of that. Um, this is where that new beginning kind of starts and it kind of comes full circle. So then on the 20th, Mars is going to move into the sign of Leo, which is your fifth house. And so this is going to be really exciting because it's going to be a fun time. Basically, Mars moving into your fifth is going to put a lot of your energy, focus, determination, all of that towards having fun right? Having fun, fucking entertainment, enjoying yourself, like doing things that feel fun, right? That make you feel good about who you are and what you're doing and that you're passionate about as well, right? And so a lot of your energy is going to start being focused there from the 20th onwards as Mars moves through the sign of Leo. Now, when it first moves in though, it is going to oppose Pluto uh, in your 11th house. And so this could be a little bit of a shift coming up for you in terms of what you're passionate about, how you entertain yourself, how you have fun versus, you know, you know, certain fears or power dynamics or changes 
um, in terms of networking and other people and connecting and, and all of that. And so something could come up with those two areas of life from the 20th to the 25th. Uh, but it could also be somehow relating back to your income, money, finances, value, quality of life, etc. Right. So um, just keep that in mind and let me know if that does happen and does come up and what it is, because um, I would really like to know. So on the 21st, we are going to have the sun moving into Gemini. So Gemini season will begin. This is your third house. So there will be kind of a, a new shift coming in of you being more focused on your environment, people, places, and things around you, maybe some learning pursuits, um, you know, more focused on going different places around you, short trips and travels, things like that. And that is basically it for the month of May, Aries. Let me know down below. You could see a lot of these things happening. I'd really love to hear your feedback. Comment the word badass if you watched the whole horoscope. I appreciate you. And uh, come back throughout the month if you need to rewatch it. And also check in and let me know what all happens. I'd love to know. And I will see you guys in the next video.